Chapter 226, Prepared to go catch some waves, let him go out there and stir up some trouble. Thud thud. Inside the heavenly tower palace, Lan Yu knocked on the room door. Come in. A sluggish sound came from inside the house. Lan Yu pushed open the door and walked in just to see Chu Quan Gren letting out a yawn. He had just woken up not long ago, and he flashed her a faint smile. She went forward and skillfully made Chu Quan Gren's bed for him. Then while she helped him change into his clothes, she said, Master, Elder Ruin has asked me to remind you to arrive at Longevity Hall on time for the meeting. Meeting? Oh, today is the beginning of the month. Chu Quan Gren said it as if it had just dawned on him. The Black Heaven sect would hold a meeting once every month to discuss the matters that had unfolded throughout the whole of last month, such as how the disciples were performing, or if the other sage orthodoxies had done anything worth mentioning. After he was done grooming himself, Chu Quan Gren took a close look at himself in the mirror. After being the sect leader for a year, I feel like my hairline has receded a bit. If this keeps on, I think I'll be bald in no time. Lan Yu laughed helplessly. Master, you're just overthinking things. Your hair is still quite thick. Your hairline didn't change at all. Is that so? Yes, you're still as good looking as always. Very well then. Along with Lan Yu, Chu Quan Gren was about to venture out of the house. In the courtyard, Lil Bing was feeding Lil Red some spirit fruits. Master. Fair Frost Sage has sent us some spirit fruits again. Yes, and this time she sent two large baskets of them. She told us that she has planted more because Godly Phoenix likes to eat them. Lil Bing pointed at the two baskets of crimson red spirit fruits at the side, which was emanating a surge of thick fire-based deist rhyme. Any one of these was an incredibly valuable top-tier medicine. However, they were merely Godly Phoenix, Lil Red snacks too. How thoughtful of her. Oh, right. Chu Quan Gren then took out a book and also a bottle. Inside the bottle were some seeds. This is the solution to the alchemy question she asked me to solve last time, as well as some supreme elixir seeds. Please pass it to her for me later. Throughout the year, Fairfrost Sage had sought Chu Quang Gren's consultation on her problems from time to time. Sometimes, some problems were more complicated so he would jot them down and save them up until he had some free time, then write down the solutions in a book for her. Besides that, he would sometimes draw some very strange items from the gacha roll, and these supreme elixir seeds were one of those. He did not have the time to plant them, so he passed them to Fairfost Sage for her to deal with. All right, Master. Outside the Heavenly Tower Palace. Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu walked in the direction of the Longevity Hall. Every disciple who met them on their way there would bow down respectfully. Greetings, Sect Leader. Greetings, Sect Leader. As compared to a year ago, Black Heaven Sect had indeed changed a lot. One of the most noteworthy things was that in just a year, the disciples' cultivation bases had shown improvements. This was especially the case for deists like Mirong Xian and Nangong Huang. Under Chu Quang Gren's close tutelage, their advancement in realms was incredibly fast. At the Longevity Hall, the elders were already gathered in full. When they saw Chu Quang Gren, everyone bowed. Greetings, sect leader. All right, no need for courtesy. Let's begin. Chu Quang Gren let out a faint smile before he sat down on the main seat of the big hall. Each elder began to report their work progress. The majority of those were unimportant small matters. It was not even halfway through the meeting yet and Chu Quan Gren had already started to yawn. It was too boring for him. Oh, right. Horizon Wing Sect has asked us for backup recently. They said that they were overrun by tormented souls. I've already dispatched some people there to deal with it. Elder Ruin suddenly brought this up. Upon hearing that, Chu Quan Gren's interest was finally piqued a little. Tormented souls. Yes. Horizon Wing Sect is based near the ancient battlefield, so it's not uncommon for them to be invaded by tormented souls at times, Elder Ruin said. Tormented souls originated from the ancient battlefield, one of the ten great forbidden areas. They were formed when the infinite ferocious chi at the ancient battlefield combined with the hateful spirits of those who had died, shaping this unique existence whose souls would wander at the regions around the ancient battlefield. The tormented souls' disturbance on the Horizon Wind Sect was not anything unusual. Black Heaven Sect had also sent some people there to support them before and such problems were always settled swiftly. The elders began to report the remaining matters. Nevertheless, these two words ancient battlefield repeated in Chu Quang Gren's mind. He recalled the sage war that the eternal sage king mentioned in the past, wherein the venue for it was exactly this ancient battlefield. This inadvertently brought up his desire to go and look at the place. I've decided. I'll be heading to the ancient battlefield. His people were still in the midst of reporting to him, but when they heard what Chu Quang Gren said, they were all momentarily stunned as they looked at each other. Sect leader, why do you want to go to the ancient battlefield? For training. Chu Quan Gren simply made up an excuse. Sect leader, what do you need more training for, 
one of the elders said in a speechless tone, and the others expressed a similar look. Sect leader, quit playing us. You can already kill sages, why else do you need training for? Well, I just need it. But once you're gone, who will look after Black Heaven sect? When I'm away, I'll temporarily put Elder Ruin in charge over everything regarding the sect. If there's anything important, just contact me. But... Elder Ruin and the rest were still somewhat hesitant. All right, that's that. Black Heaven sect has had such great improvements over this one year. You guys have also dealt with our sex matters in a very organized manner. It's not like you won't be able to handle things without me here, isn't it? Chu Quan Gren smiled back at them. What a pity. He had secluded himself in the Black Heaven sect for a year now. If he still did not venture outside, he feared that his body would start to rust. Ah, all right then. Elder Ruin nodded. Truth be told, it was not that they did not want Chu Quan Gren to leave. However, throughout this one year, the fact that Black Heaven sect could develop until its state today was mostly owed to Chu Quan Gren. They had unknowingly developed a sense of dependency on this young sect leader who had just reached the age of 20. Hence when they heard that he was going to leave the sect, they felt at a loss and found it hard to believe that this would happen to them someday. How did they develop such high dependence on such a young sect leader? Great. A smile was etched on Chu Quang Gren's face. Lan Yu, let's go. Let's pack our stuff and then go catch some waves. Oh, I mean, catch some training. Deep inside Black Heaven's sect. Inside a cottage, Black Heaven's third forefather smiled faintly. This little guy is going out to stir up trouble again. Shall we get someone to follow him? There's no need for that. Black Heaven's second forefather's voice rang out. Since he can already slay sages, I don't think he'll need any protectors now. Sages were known to have the combat strength in Firmament Star. Undoubtedly, the current Chu Quan Gren already stood amongst the most elite group of people in the entire world. Why else would he need protectors for? Ha, who knows what sort of trouble would this little guy create this time? Honorable Xian Chi chuckled lightly and said. He remembered the times when Chu Quan Gren went out for training in the past. There was not once where he would not do something incredibly shocking and almost turn the whole world upside down. Now that he was out once again, who knew what kind of havoc would he wreck this time? Honorable Xian Qi's sentence left the few other forefathers rather speechless. Everything this little guy does is incredible, but one thing he's too capable of is causing a stir. Ha, huh, that's pretty good too. Young people should have the energy to be allowed the freedom to express themselves. After all, there's still the few of us old ones to stand guard. Black Heaven's second forefather laughed. Black Heaven sect was now at an unprecedented height in their strength. Besides Chu Quan Gren who had the combat strength of a sage, they also had second forefather, third forefather, and fair frost sage, not to mention honorable Xian Qi who was a boundary sage on his way to becoming a sage. On top of that, seventh forefather was going to attempt ascension soon as well. Once he succeeded, they would have another boundary sage. Moreover, Black Heaven sect aside, these two sage orthodoxies the school of White Lotus and Royal Azure Dynasty also provided Chu Quan Gren with a strong backing. Chapter 227 Chu Quan Gren descends into the world once again, shocking the world. Outside the Black Heaven Sex Mountain entrance. For the last one year or so, a few tea houses had opened within several miles from this mountain entrance. The businesses of these few tea houses were quite bad, but they remained open because the owners of these tea houses were spies for various great sage orthodoxies. Spies who were sent to observe the Black Heaven sect. A year ago, Chu Quan Gren killed two of the Murong clan's two great sages, shocking the world. This made the sage orthodoxies of Azure Dragon Domain especially fearful, and because of that, Black Heaven Sect's influence became stronger as well. Every sage orthodoxy wondered if Black Heaven Sect would take this opportunity to expand their territory and strengthen their influence, therefore posing a threat to themselves. However, much to their surprise, Black Heaven Sect did not show any sign of expanding their forces even though they had become a great force. On the contrary, Black Heaven Sect had become more low profile than they previously were, not showing any movements at all and this left a lot of people scratching their heads. Even so, many orthodoxies still dared not let their guard down and had instead sent quite a few spies to keep a close eye on Black Heaven sect. The few tea houses outside the mountain entrance were the venues in which the spies gathered. Boss, don't you think this Black Heaven sect has been unusually quiet? It's been a year, but they haven't done anything in particular. I feel like their influence has slowly dwindled, a dark-skinned man said. Beside him, a middle-aged man said indifferently, this is what I call the true brilliance of Black Heaven sect. A year ago, had Black Heaven sect went all out with their climbing influence, it would have surely attracted a backlash from the few other sage orthodoxies. Now, it may look like they were not acting at all, but the truth is they're actually amassing their power secretly. It looks like their influence has begun to fade, but it is still a fact that Chu Quan Gren had slain two sages, and nobody still dares to do anything to them. At that, 
the middle-aged man shook his head and said, I'm afraid everyone has underestimated this young sect leader. He may be young, but he definitely has his own unique style of dealing with stuff. His methods are one of a kind. Pfft, who even dares to underestimate him? He can kill sages, and that's just too abnormal. Speaking of which, this Chu Quan Gren has stayed in the Black Heaven sect for almost a year now and we haven't once seen him in person yet. Rumor has it that this person has incredibly exquisite, peerless looks. I'm quite interested to witness what that truly is. Eh, boss, what's up with you? The dark-skinned man suddenly realized that his surroundings had turned into pin-drop silence while he was talking. The middle-aged man was staring at a place afar with an incredible grim look on his face, and his eyes were filled with grave shock. It was not just the middle-aged man. Everybody in the few tea houses now had a similarly solemn look on their faces and a similar shock in their eyes. They were all looking in the same direction. The dark-skinned man followed the people's gazes and looked in that direction. What met his eyes were a man and a woman who were walking down from the mountain trail, slowly striding towards them. They both had striking and unrivaled good looks. This was especially for the man who was walking in front. He was donned in a wide-sleeved white robe, his raven hair at a waist's length, with an exquisite sword draped over his belt. The aura that he emitted was almost divine. The picturesque sceneries of nature in front of him seemed to pale in comparison. The dark-skinned man recognized who he was with just one look. Chu Quan Gren. This person right in front of him was the one who was feared by all orthodoxies, the one who made all other sky prides paled in comparison Chu Quan Gren. Didn't you want to have a look at him? How does it feel? The middle-aged man forced himself to keep his composure, but the tone of his voice was still uncontrollably shaken. He truly is peerless, the dark-skinned man said. Under everyone's limelight, Chu Quan Gren led Lan Yu down towards the crowd, then sat in front of the middle-aged man. Everyone's first reaction was to raise their guard and brace themselves as if facing an impending great enemy, but soon after, they reverted to just a bitter smile deep down in their hearts. In face of such a persona, they did not have the means of defending themselves anyway. There was no use for any sort of vigilance or preparation. Boss, I'll have two bowls of tea. Chu Quan Gren let out a faint smile. Sure, sure. The middle-aged man hastily fetched out their tea house's best tea leaves before he poured out two bowls for Chu Quan Gren and his companion. How long have you guys been waiting here? Chu Quan Gren drank the tea with a smile on his face. About a year. Ah, that's long enough. Time for all of you to disassemble then. The middle-aged man exchanged glances with a few of his men and let out a helpless laugh. Since Chu Quan Gren had already asked them to go, how did they dare say another word? Yes, we got it. After finishing his tea, Chu Quan Gren stood up and ready to leave. Seeing him heading away from the direction of Black Heaven sect, the middle-aged man could not bear but asked, Sect Leader Chu, where are you headed? I've been in for a year, so I now feel like going outside. Chu Quan Gren said casually. He said it unremarkably, but the people around him were all astonished upon hearing that. After he had left, the middle-aged man, who stood rooted to the ground, instantly took out his communication compass and contacted their orthodoxies respectively. Quick, quick. Inform the sect leader. Chu Quan Gren, has descended into the world. One after another, the message spread to the various great orthodoxies. The mortal realm, which had remained peaceful for a year, had once again been brought into ripples just because of one man's re-entry. Tegzu Temple. Tegzu Temple Lord held a deist scripture in his hand while he was having a spar with Wuchen Zi. Suddenly, one of the elders walked in with a solemn look on his face. Tegzu Temple Lord asked, Elder, what's the matter? Why the glum look? Chu Quan Gren has descended into the world. Just that sentence alone sent cold shivers down the spines of the highest positioned old and young man in the entire Tegzu Temple. They were shocked. After a fair amount of time, Tegzu Temple Lord let out a bitter smile. He could not hold back in the end. Inside Thunder Temple. The ruling abbot was meditating with a string of prayer beads in his hand. He was suddenly interrupted by a monk who walked up to him and whispered something in his ear. The weight of that message was so shocking that it made this highly experienced elder monk's hand quiver accidentally snapping the prayer beads in his grip. One by one, the prayer beads dropped onto the floor with a continuous tapping sound. Amitabha, the peace of this world is once again disrupted. After quite some time, the abbot chanted a word of mantra. Royal Azure Dynasty The Royal Azure Dynasty king received the news while he was in a royal audience, yet he could not help but burst into laughter there and then. Haha, this fella has finally decided to descend into the world. His reaction left all his civilian and military officers dumbfounded. Who the hell was it that could elicit such an exaggerated response from the Dynasty King? Dynasty King, who was it that you said is descending into the world? One of his officials could not wrap his head around it so he asked curiously. Who else? Who else but my very own son-in-law, our Royal Azure Dynasty's ruler matrimonial Chu Quan Gren. Royal Azure Dynasty King laughed as he said. At those words, 
all the officials present were utterly surprised, and the court plunged into a state of uproar. I can't believe it's him. Chu Quan Gren. My goodness, he has descended back into the realm. Inside a forest that was eternally shrouded in mist, in the deep reaches of the Azure Dragon Domain. Here, there was a palace. The palace belonged to the current head of all the demonic orthodoxies in Azure Dragon Domain, Corpse Refining Sect. Numerous elites of the demonic world were all gathered here today. They were distributing and marking their respective territories. Ever since Chu Quan Gren had annihilated all the elites from Euphoria Sect and Ashura Sect, the other demonic forces had taken this opportunity to rise up by taking over the territories which originally belonged to Euphoria Sect and Ashura Sect. With that, they formed the new three great demonic orthodoxies. Meanwhile, today was the day where the three great demonic orthodoxies would negotiate. However, at this moment, one of the demonic orthodoxy disciples suddenly ran in hastily. Bad news. Chu Quan Gren has descended into the realm. This news astounded the demonic orthodoxy elites who were present, and a chill shot from the solace of their feet up into their heaven spirits. Quick, send a message out to order all our disciples to go into hiding. If they were to encounter Chu Quan Gren, let staying alive be their utmost priority. God damn it! How long has this fellow vanished for? Why is he back here in this world so soon? Then what for are we still marking these territories? With this guy in the realm, we're better off scampering for our own safeties. On this day, a man walked out of the mountain entrance with a sword by his waist. He had caused distraught in all deists deist cores, snapped the elder monk's prayer beads, shocked the dynasty's officials, and most importantly of all, he had filled all demonic cultivator souls with consternation. Chapter 228, Ancient Battlefield, Meeting Qian Gufui Again, A Little Brother of His Little Brother Chu Kuang Gren's descent into the world shocked every force. This was a fact that they could not ignore. The first time Chu Kuang Gren descended into the world, he slew an honorable supreme and annihilated hundred thousand demonic cultivators, which heavily demoralized all other sky prides. The second time he descended into the world came after his three years of closed-door meditation. Everybody thought that he was already eliminated by the tides of time then. However, he still managed to shock the world with his unparalleled prowess by slaying honorable supremes in Sword Prayer City and getting enlisted as first in the Hundred Swords Spectrum. He sparred with a sage at Whitelock Mountain, self-created an emperor technique, then took over as Black Heaven Sect leader, and obtained recognition from the godly phoenix. The most dreadful thing was that he had only just become the sect leader for a few days when he ran over to the Black Warrior Domain and killed two sages from the Murong clan. Now, after he had been sect leader for a year long, this was his third time descending into the world. Who knew what sort of chaos he would bring this time? All the great forces of the world were closely monitoring his whereabouts. There were the ten great forbidden areas in Firmament Star. These ten great forbidden areas were so notorious on Firmament Star that even sages kept their distances from them, not daring to venture too deep into them. The ancient battlefield was one of those. Meanwhile, amongst all ten great forbidden areas, the danger level of the ancient battlefield was relatively low. As long as one did not venture too deep into it, mild exploration would still be permitted. Besides, throughout the ages, many wars had taken place at the ancient battlefield which left behind numerous treasures and opportunities of fortune. Hence, this place attracted many cultivators who came to explore and shaped a unique adventuring tradition at the place. The Outer Region of the Ancient Battlefield Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu were strolling on a piece of barren desert as sandstorms swept past around them. If it were any usual person who had no necessary precautions, they would have felt unusually uncomfortable. Even opening their mouths to speak would be a difficulty because once opened, those sand would surely make their way into their mouths. However, Chu Quan Gren and his companion were both cultivators with impeccable strengths. By circulating their spiritual power, the surface of their bodies released a layer of force field, effortlessly barricading off all the sand. Hence, the sandstorms did not affect them even the slightest bit. Chu Quan Gren stared at a deeper region of the desert. Although it was hard to see with the naked eye, he was still able to sense the immense ferocious chi within that place. Such a scale of ferocious chi was formed from God knew how many massacres and the death of how many living beings. The ancient battlefield has three regions, the outer zone, the inner zone, and the core area. That sage war that the eternal sage king mentioned must have taken place at the core area. But the ferocious chi in there is too strong, we best stay away from it. Chu Quan Gren muttered. Master, look. There's a fort there. Just then, Lan Yu pointed to a spot afar. A distance away, a towering fort stood majestically in the middle of the sandstorm. That should be Sun Soil City. Chu Quan Gren speculated. Sun Soil City was the only fort at the ancient battlefield's outer zone, and it was also the gathering point for countless cultivators who came here to adventure. The two of them headed in the direction of Sun Soil City to which they soon arrived at. The city gate was left open and there was no one guarding it. Meanwhile, the security inside the city was unusually lenient with people walking in and out at their will, and they all looked travel-stained. 
The worst part was that some people were having fist fights in the middle of the street, yet nobody bothered to intervene. Damn, the folk custom here is quite rugged. Chu Quang Gren chuckled. They wanted to look for a slightly cleaner place to refresh themselves and scout for some intel regarding this ancient battlefield in the meantime. After walking in a big circle, they finally found an inn in the middle of the city. This inn looked quite exquisite and high-classed. To be able to open such an inn at this kind of place must be someone with a considerable amount of wealth. My two guests, here for a quick stop or to spend a night over. The moment they walked in, a middle-aged man approached them and welcomed them. When Chu Quan Gren saw this person, he was rather surprised. Master Qian. This person was not anybody else but Qian Fugui himself. He was the one who opened the famed Blades Hotel in the Hidden Sword Canyon, Qian Fugui. Qian Fugui's eyes lit up. Although this person before him had a spiritual veil cover hence he could not look at his face clearly, Qian Fugui was able to instantly recognize that this person in front of him was Chu Quan Gren by hearing his voice alone. Yo, what an important guest. Brother Chu, please come in. Qian Fugui hurriedly welcomed the two inside the inn, then personally reserved a clean private room for them. In the private room. Chu Quan Gren stared at Qian Fugui in front of him and said, My oh my, Master Qian, don't tell me this inn belongs to you as well. Indeed, Brother Chu. Ha, the Fugui firm is truly the biggest business firm on Firmament Star. Your establishments are everywhere. Chu Quan Gren revealed Qian Fugui's identity the moment he opened his mouth. Upon hearing that, Qian Fugui's expression froze, but he immediately readjusted it to his normal demeanor. I wonder how you figured that out, Brother Chu. Qian Fugui quit concealing the truth when he realized that his identity was exposed. I guessed it. Oh, all right then. Fine, let's cut to the point. Master Qian, since you're here at this moment, you're not purposely waiting for my arrival, are you? It's true that the Fugui firm's businesses cover almost every corner of the world, thus our intel is quite adequate as well. I caught wind that Brother Chu was headed to the ancient battlefield, hence I came to Sunsoil City to make this gamble. Who knew that I would actually meet you here? Why is it that you are looking for me? Not much. Would you buy it if I said I just wanted to make friends with you, Brother Chu? Qian Fugui smiled. I believe you. Chu Quan Gren nodded. Because in this world, there are many people who want to make friends with me, so I don't think Master Qian's an exception. With his current position of power, there were indeed numerous people who wished they could befriend Chu Quan Gren. Brother Chu, you can be really direct when you speak. Qian Fugui sighed helplessly. All right, if there's nothing else. I'm going to go get some rest. Chu Quan Gren said. Then just as he was about to stand up and leave, a sudden commotion was heard from downstairs. There seemed to be a standoff at the street, where both sides had weapons held in their hands. The situation was incredibly tense, and it looked as though an outburst could occur at any moment. It's the people from Horizon Wing Troop and Tenacious Tiger Troop. Qian Fugui took a look at the commotion and explained with a smile. A lot of cultivators in Sun Soil City were here for an adventure in the ancient battlefield and to look for opportunities of fortune. Besides the people who traveled solo, a large portion of them were cultivators who traveled together and formed groups. Since this place was the great ancient battlefield, the adventuring groups which these cultivators had formed were also referred to as troops. Some of the more powerful troops even had honorables. Chu Quan Gren took a closer look at what was happening and noticed that this squabble between the two troops seemed to have stemmed from a supreme weapon. It turned out that the Horizon Wing Troop had discovered a supreme weapon at the outer zone of the ancient battlefield but someone from the Donatius Tiger Troop claimed to have found it first and that it was taken away by the Horizon Wing Troop. After both troops returned to Sun Soil City, they gathered their forces and prepared for a fight. Is it even worthwhile just for a supreme weapon? Chu Quan Gren shook his head and laughed it off. There were loads of honorable grade swords inside his sacred emerald sword case. Adding that to the gacha draws he had over this past year, he now owned nearly twenty odd sacred swords. Those were just swords alone. As for the remainder of the equipment, he had drawn God knew how many of them, and he had deposited them all into Black Heaven Sex Treasury. Brother Chu, you're the epitome of the saying, the well-fed doesn't know how the starving suffers, Qian Fugui could not help but say. A supreme weapon was an extremely rare item to the outside world as some of the honorables did not even have one of these. Right, speaking of which, the leader of this Horizon Wing troop should be a deist from the Horizon Wing sect. Mind I remind you that the Horizon Wing sect is an affiliated force of the Black Heaven sect. Oh, is that so? Chu Quan Gren was a little surprised at that. If that was true, it meant that this Horizon Wing sect was like a little brother of his little brother. So, should he get involved, or should he not? Chapter 229, Assisting from the Dark, to Thagata Rebirth Mantra, The Buddhist Emperor Technique Wang Hu, what you did is unacceptable. On the street, Lang Chong Kong, the leader of Horizon Wing Troop shouted at his rival, the leader of Tenacious Tiger Troop. Opposite him, Wang Hu declared calmly, 
that supreme weapon belongs to the tenacious tiger troop. This fact is undeniable. No way, Ling Tian was the one who found it first and brought it back here. Just because you claim that it's yours doesn't make it a fact. You heard that right. I'm here to tell you today that I must take that supreme weapon away with me, and I'm not leaving here until that happens. A supreme weapon like that was way too precious for them. One should know that despite their decades of effort at the ancient battlefield, the tenacious tiger troop had never discovered more than a handful of supreme weapons. So you mean to say that we have to fight you for it? Lang Chong Kong said coldly. Bring it on. Wang Hu growled as an incredibly ferocious deist rhyme erupted from his body, and a tremendous domineering force encased the bodies of Lang Chong Kong and his few men. This is the perfected paradise realm. Lang Chang Kong's expression changed. His strength was originally more or less equal to Wang Hu's as they were both late-stage paradise cultivators. However, now it seemed that Wang Hu had achieved a breakthrough before he could. No wonder he behaved so arrogantly today. Lang Chong Kong, both our troops have rivaled each other for so long, and I have already suppressed my fury for far too long. Today, I've decided to let it all out on you guys. With a grin, Wang Hu threw out a fierce punch. The violent deist rhyme locked onto Lang Chong Kong in an instant. Meanwhile, the long sword on Lang Chang Kong's waist was unsheathed as he immediately threw himself into battle with Wang Hu. The rest of the people picked their targets and lunged forward as well. A big battle had broken out on the street. Inside the inn. Chu Quan Gren watched as the two sides got into a battle. This Wang Hu is really courageous. How dare he touch our deist from Horizon Wing Sect. He should know that Horizon Wing Sect was an affiliated force of the Black Heaven Sect. Ha, this is the young people's matter. As the higher up of Black Heaven Sect, I think you best not interfere. Besides, Black Heaven Sect has so many affiliated forces, I don't think you guys would care too much about just one Horizon Wing Sect deist. Qian Fugui laughed and said. As a matter of fact, what he said was true. Black Heaven Sect indeed had a lot of affiliated forces, and they did not have the time to care about every single deist of the forces. That was precisely why Wang Hu dared to use violence. He was certain that Black Heaven Sect would never bother about such a trivial matter. It was a shame. Never in a million years would he have seen this coming, that the Black Heaven Sect leader was currently not more than 200 meters away from him, watching this very battle. If he did, he would never have attempted this even if someone gave him a hundred times more courage. To hell with you. Wang Hu let out an evil laugh before he lashed out a forceful punch. This punch was unusually potent, and Lang Chang Kong's expression looked extremely awful. He knew it was very unlikely that he could block this hit. Even so, standing there and not doing anything was no different from waiting for death. He then unleashed an abrupt sword strike. You really think that sword chi of yours will be able to deflect my attack? Wang Hu yelled out. However, the moment the sword chi collided with the fist energy, Wang Hu's expression instantly changed. A gush of impeccably majestic force erupted and tore the fist energy apart within an instant, brutally blasting Wang Hu off his feet. Troop leader. What's going on? Everyone on the tenacious tiger troop was shocked. They rushed to Wang Hu's side only to find strands of fine and tightly woven sword chi interweaving on his body, carving out bloodied slash marks one after another. The inner armor that Wang Hu used to protect his own life had already been shattered. He laid there inside the wreckage, his breath shallow and he seemed only half alive. There's an unbeatable master here, let's leave. Wang Hu warned. At that, the people of tenacious tiger troop immediately turned vigilant and guarded the surroundings while they escorted Wang Hu away from the place. Meanwhile, the people of Horizon Wing Troop came to Lang Chang Kong's side. Troop leader, that's impressive. Exactly. I can't believe you managed to beat Wang Hu. Lang Chang Kong himself was dazed. How could he not know the level of his powers? That sword that he had struck out just now would be tough for Wang Hu to even protect himself, not to mention defeat him. What the hell was going on? Was there a possibility that someone was helping him from the dark? When that thought flashed across his mind, Lang Chang Kong made a fist salute and said to his surroundings, I... Lang Chong Kong from Horizon Wing Sect, would like to express my gratitude for this master who had helped me earlier. Please, may I request to meet you in person? Come to the private room on the inn's second floor. A cold-hearted voice rang out in Lang Chang Kong's ears. He knew what he had to do, so he led his troop mates to the inn not far away. At the inn, inside the private room. Chu Quan Gren smiled. That Wang Hu was fortunate that he had a life-saving inner armor on him. Otherwise, he would have long been dead after sustaining that hit. It was indeed him earlier who had assisted Lang Chong Kong from the dark and saved him. No matter what, he was a little brother of his little brother. Nonetheless, he was rather surprised that Wang Hu wore a life-saving inner armor on him. Otherwise, that degree of deist rhyme he unleashed would have been enough to kill him several times over. Seems like you need some time alone with the people from Horizon Wing Sect, Brother Chu. I shall excuse myself and leave you some private space then. See you, Master Qian. 
With a smile, Qian Fugui made a fist salute and left the room. Not long after, Lang Chong Kong and his men entered the private room. When they saw Xu Quangren and Lan Yu, they were stunned for a moment. Both of them had a layer of faint spiritual veil shrouding their faces, rendering them unrecognizable. Despite that, Lang Chong Kong did not mind the two secretive face concealing antics. He walked up to them and said, I believe it was you who gave me a hand just now. Yes, have a seat. Chu Quan Gren nodded slightly. Many thanks. Don't mention it. I only saved you because I'm from the Black Heaven sect, so I can consider myself related to you guys in a way. Upon hearing that, Lang Chong Kong and his men were sent into astonishment. They did not realize that Chu Quan Gren was such a heavyweight. Oh, so you're a fellow brother from Black Heaven sect. Forgive me for my ignorance. May I ask for your name, brother? Lang Chong Kong inquired. My surname is Chu. Chu Quan Gren kept his full name a secret. It did not bother Lang Chong Kong at all as the few of them struck up conversations. Right, Brother Lang, I have a question. I see you're not any lowly person. Did Horizon Wing Sect not arrange a protector for you here? Chu Quan Gren felt rather strange at that. Whatever it was, Horizon Wing Sect was an honorable orthodoxy after all, so he found it hard to believe that they did not prepare a protector for their own deist. On that note, Lang Chang Kong's eyes revealed a sense of despair. Some time back, I encountered a high-level tormented soul at the ancient battlefield. My protector sacrificed his own life to save me. I'm sorry. I didn't know. No worries. I came to the ancient battlefield this time for some adventure as well. Brother Ling, since you've been at the ancient battlefield for so many years, I bet you're very familiar with the areas nearby. I wonder if you could guide me around, Chu Quan Gren said. Haha, now that's something you don't have to worry about. My troop and I plan to head there tomorrow. If you don't mind, Brother Chu, you may tag along. I shall gladly accept your invitation then. The next day, Chu Quan Gren climbed out from his bed to draw a gacha roll. Congratulations host for drawing the legendary tear technique, to Thagata Rebirth Mantra. Chu Quan Gren's eyes lit up. I can't believe I just got a legendary tear technique. Why does this name sound like some sort of Buddhist cultivation technique? He retrieved the thing that he had just drawn. Suddenly, a huge stream of enlightenment gushed into his mind. Following the Heaven Slaying Sword Drawing Technique, the Spring Breeze Healing Technique, and the Sword Chi Transformation, he had mastered yet another Emperor Technique. The Tathagata Rebirth Mantra. In addition, he had obtained it through the Gacha Roll, so he did not need to waste a lot of time trying to apprehend it. The secret and essence of this technique were already fully apparent the moment he retrieved it from the draw. As Chu Quan Gren had guessed, this was indeed a Buddhist Emperor Technique. This Emperor Technique was extremely powerful. However, there were no opportunities for Chu Quan Gren to utilize it now, so he did not dwell on it further. He led Lan Yu out of the inn and went to the city gate of Sun Soil City. That was where he, Lang Chong Kong, and his men had agreed to meet. Chapter 230, Exploring the Ancient Battlefield, The White-Robed General, One of the Seven Great Mysterious Manifestations. Sun Soil City, Outside the City Gate. Lang Chong Kong and his people were waiting for Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu. Once they saw the both of them, they walked up to them welcomingly. My two friends, let's begin our journey. All right. Chu Quan Gren nodded slightly. Under Lang Chang Kong's lead, the group of people ventured into the ancient battlefield. The ancient battlefield was separated into the outer zone, the inner zone, and the core area. Lang Chang Kong and his troop usually explored around the outer zone only, rarely stepping foot into the inner zone, what more the core area. That place was extremely dreaded even by sages. Along the way, the people that Lang Chang Kong had brought along were secretly gazing at Chu Quan Gren and his companion their eyes full of curiosity. They had heard a lot about Black Heaven sect, but this was the first time they met someone from the sect in person. Besides, their looks were quite extraordinary. Even though Chu Quan Gren covered his face with a spiritual veil, his magnificent temperament was still hard to conceal. While the rest of them were glancing at him, Chu Quan Gren had already silently activated the treasure locating technique to search for any treasures around them. This one search immediately made him gasp in awe. 300 meters south, there is a supreme weapon. 400 meters southeast, there is a supreme weapon. 8,500 meters southeast, there is a broken boundary sage grade weapon. 3,000 meters southwest. 4,000 meters west. Messages after messages kept coming in. The majority of those were weapon type treasures, but this was what Chu Quan Gren had expected. After all, this was the ancient battlefield. Since they were battles, surely there had to be weapons. Brother Ling, please stop for a while. After walking a distance, Chu Quan Gren suddenly spoke. Everyone was stunned. Anything, Brother Chu? Do you need a rest? No. Move that rock beside you. 
Chu Quanggren pointed to a large rock beside Lang Chong Kong and said. Lang Chong Kong did not understand why he was instructed to do so, but he still did it anyway. When he moved the rock aside and saw what was beneath it, the whole group of people gleamed with joy. Under the rock was an iron armor. There were runes carved on the iron armor. Although it looked old and worn out, the material it was made of looked rare. If they were to sell it, they could surely trade it for quite some soul stones. Brother Chu, how did you find this thing? I have a sharp sense when it comes to detecting some treasures. Chu Quanggren smiled faintly. Are you a natural-born supernatural? Lang Chong Kong was slightly surprised. In this world, there were certain people who had special abilities that were just like a deist physique, and these people were referred to as supernatural. Certain deist physiques were supernatural too. I never thought that you'd have such abilities, Brother Chu. Lang Chong Kong smiled, then passed Chu Quanggren the iron armor. To him, Chu Quanggren was the one who discovered this iron armor so it naturally should belong to him. However, Chu Quanggren shook his head. This thing has no use for me. I think you should keep it, Brother Ling. I can't take this. You're the one who found this, so it should be yours. I can't be greedy. Hmm, why don't you keep it first? When we get back, we'll lay out all the things we looted and distribute it by then. Chu Quanggren smiled in response. Lang Chong Kong pondered for a while before agreeing. Well, all right. The group of people continued to march forward. Since he had revealed his sharp treasure-seeking senses, Chu Quanggren did not hold back anymore and revealed the locations of all the treasures nearby them. Nonetheless, these treasures were all too worthless for him. Even when it came to supreme weapons that could send Lang Chong Kong and his men into waves of excitement, it was too common a sight for him. Hence, he decided to part ways with Lang Chong Kong and his group in a while more to venture into the inner zone with Lan Yu, to check out if there were any rare finds. Hey, this is another supreme weapon. Under Chu Quanggren's lead, Lang Chong Kong and his men found another piece of supreme weapon. The whole atmosphere was plunged into a huge camaraderie. The edge of their mouths curled upwards as they let out incredibly delighted smiles. They looked toward Chu Quanggren with a sense of admiration. Brother Chu, this treasure locating technique of yours is way too powerful. Its utility in the ancient battlefield is massive. Exactly. With you here, this ancient battlefield has become an infinite, giant treasure chest. The group could not help but be shocked and moved. It had to be known that throughout their whole journey, the treasures that they had found with Chu Quanggren's guidance far exceeded what they had collected for the past few decades. How outrageous was this? If word had gone out about this ability of Chu Quanggren's, they fear that all adventurers of the entire ancient battlefield would rave. Meanwhile, Lang Chong Kong stared at Chu Quanggren as if he was deep in thought. So far, they had indeed obtained many treasures on their way here, wherein quite a few of them were supreme weapons. However, he noticed that Chu Quanggren was not at all interested in these treasures as if they were roadside junk to him. This made him feel that there was more to this person. Even in Black Heaven sect, a single supreme weapon would attract the full attention of most disciples. Only a few Sky Prides could resist supreme weapons. Could he actually be one of them? Lang Chong Kong said to himself in his mind, speculating who Chu Quanggren really was. As for the possibility of him being the Black Heaven sect leader, he dared not think until that point. Such kind of character appearing before him in person would be too good to be real. Tap tap. Just then, heavy footsteps were heard from not far away. What met their eyes next was a figure who wore broken armor and held a saber in one hand, walking in the direction of Chu Quanggren and the group. Chu Quanggren gave the person a weird glance from top to bottom because to his astonishment, he noticed that there was no sign of life on this person. This meant that it was not human. Is this what they call a tormented soul? Chu Quanggren mumbled under his breath. There was a kind of unique existence at the ancient battlefield, and that was the Tormented Souls. The so-called Tormented Souls were formed from the combination of the ancient battlefield's endless ferocious chi and the resentful spirits of the fallen ones from battle. They roamed around the ancient battlefield, replaying the gruesome scenes of carnage over and over, day after day, and they were the most dangerous existence on the ancient battlefield. It's just a normal Tormented Soul. Lang Chong Kong swept a glance at the Tormented Soul, which did not bother him at all. One of the people from his troop held a sword in one hand and charged forward. In just a few moments, they annihilated that tormented soul. After the tormented soul was destroyed, it turned into a billow of smoke and dissipated. However, its resentment did not vanish as it returned to the earth. All it needed was more time and it would then combine with the ferocious chi once again, forming a new tormented soul. This was the reason there were never-ending tormented souls on the ancient battlefield. After settling that tormented soul, the group of people stopped for a respite. Right. Have you guys heard of the white-robed general legend? One of the more talkative teens in the troop suddenly spoke. Nonsense. This is one of the most well-known legends of the ancient battlefield, and also one of the seven great mysterious manifestations. Of course, people would have heard of it. 
one of them laughed in return. Those words then piqued Chu Kuang Gren's interest. Seven great mysterious manifestations? It's the first time I've ever heard of this. Mind telling me more? Sure I can. The talkative teen continued, the seven great mysterious manifestations refer to the seven unsolved mysteries of the cultivation world. For instance, the floating ghost ship, the headless female corpse, and more. This white-robed general of the ancient battlefield is one of them. Legend has it that there is a certain white-robed general in the ancient battlefield. Everywhere he passes would descend into damnation, and every tormented soul would stay away from it. People say that this white-robed general is the king of the ancient battlefield, an eternal murderous soul birthed from the infinite ferocious chi of the ancient battlefield. Some people also say that this white-robed general was, many years back, a general from one of the countries around here. He perished in battle here, where his resentful spirit remains since. The talkative teen narrated the story vividly and enthusiastically. However, while they were listening, the group of people suddenly sensed that something was not quite right. The sky had suddenly turned dark. Chapter 231, The Inner Zone, High Level Tormented Soul, Acting So Dramatically Hey, why has the sky turned dark? Everyone was very surprised. Meanwhile, Lang Chang Kong's face changed as he looked into the distance. From the darkened sky afar, endless gusts of winds and sand gathered, connecting both the heavens and earth, like a black dragon with menacing teeth and claws. A horrible storm was brewing. Not good, it's a sandstorm. Let's get out of here. Lang Chang Kong yelled. Everyone's expression soon turned into horror. Sandstorms in the ancient battlefield were unlike the ones in other ordinary deserts. That current sandstorm had a terrifyingly ferocious chi contained within it which would most likely kill an honorable if one were to be swept into it. Lang Chong Kong and the others never stood a chance against that natural disaster. Brother Chu, let's go. Lang Chong Kong shouted towards Chu Quan Gren with a frightened expression. Then, he led others, running in another direction. Chu Quan Gren glanced at the overwhelming sandstorm and hesitated for a while before both he and Lan Yu then ran away with the others. In fact, the sandstorm was not a threat to him at all, but it was horrifying to Lang Chong Kong and the others. Damn our bad luck, I can't believe we ran into a sandstorm today. Stop complaining and run faster. They kept on running. At last, although shocked, everyone managed to escape from that disaster. Phew, now that I've survived from this sandstorm, that encounter is enough for me to brag about it for the rest of my life once I return home. The talkative young man laughed. Everyone had a look on them as well, that they had just survived a terrifying disaster. Haha, <laughs> I'm still alive. Hey, why are you touching me? I want to find out if someone has wet their pants. Lang Chong Kong and the others talked and laughed as they laid on the ground. Captain, something doesn't seem right, one of the female cultivators in the group said with a concerned look as she observed their surroundings. At that, everyone looked at each other. Lang Chong Kong immediately came to his senses and looked around before his expression gradually turned grim. This area seems to be, the inner zone. The moment those words were spoken, everyone's expression suddenly changed. Compared to the outer zone of the ancient battlefield, the inner zone was a more horrifying area. Lang Chong Kong and the others had ventured to the ancient battlefield for so many years yet they had never been to the inner zone. What? Damn, we seem to have run the wrong way. Let's quickly head back then. Lang Chong Kong nodded and said towards a cultivator, Old Zhang, set a path to Sun Soil City. We shall head back now. Got it. When Old Zhang took out a compass and was about to find out their current location, a roar suddenly rang out from somewhere nearby, and a great surge of ferocious chi that could seemingly materialize immediately swept towards them violently. Lang Chong Kong and the others immediately readied their weapons as if a powerful enemy was approaching them. All they saw was a huge toad descending from the sky. That toad was very ugly but had mist-formed black ferocious chi surging around its body. Its grayish-white skin squirmed as if a hideous face was howling from within. Hi! High-level tormented soul! Everyone was extremely terrified. The high-level tormented souls of the ancient battlefield were extremely terrifying and at least on par with the strength of a battle monarch. It was not something that could be easily dealt with by Lang Chong Kong and his men. Retreat. Lang Chong Kong shouted, ordering everyone to leave. He then took out a long sword with the intention of buying time for the others to escape. Even he was very well clear that his Paradise Realm cultivation level would not last long against it. No, Captain. We will fight with you until our last breaths. That's right, we'll never leave you behind. We're a team after all. Everyone looked like they were staring death in the eyes. As for Lang Chong Kong, his nose soured as he was so touched. At that moment, a ray of white light shot out and directly landed on the toad's body. The high-level tormented soul, which was akin to a battle monarch's level, was brutally blown to bits. Lan Yu then walked towards them slowly. She was the one who attacked just now. She looked strangely at the teary-eyed Lang Chong Kong and his group. It was as if she was implying, was that worth a fuss? 
isn't that just a battle monarch? A single punch should do the trick, so why is everyone sobbing and wailing so dramatically? Upon seeing that, the corners of Lang Chang Kong's and his men's mouths twitched. Their emotional outbursts just now were meaningless. However, they were secretly astonished at the same time. A high-level tormented soul was destroyed by a single punch. That level of strength was a little overwhelming for the likes of them. Then, Lang Chang Kong looked at Chu Quan Gren who was walking towards them from nearby with a complicated look in his eyes. All this while, it's obvious that Lan Yu has been treating Chu Quan Gren as her master, yet she possesses such a level of strength. If that's the case, then how terrifying is Chu Quan Gren's power then? Lang Chang Kong did not dare to think about it anymore. So this is a high-level tormented soul from the inner zone? Doesn't seem that scary to me, Chu Quan Gren murmured with a slight disappointment in his eyes. Lang Chang Kong and the others let out a bitter laugh at his words. A high-level tormented soul is not that scary. Is this guy the boss here? Everyone started to feel unworthy of being in Chu Kuan Gren's company. However, there are indeed more treasures in the inner zone. Sensing the treasures around him, Chu Kuan Gren nodded slightly. Lang Chang Kong's eyes lit up with delight. Um, Captain, this is a great opportunity for us. Old Zhang looked at Lang Chang Kong. After all, they rarely traveled into the inner zone, and the treasures in the inner zone were more valuable than the ones found in the outer zone. They initially thought it would be impossible to explore that area due to their strengths, but things were different now that both Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu were with them. With Chu Quan Gren's strength and his ability to detect treasures, they could still make a profit even if the rest of them were to follow behind him and pick up what he left behind. Everyone looked at Lang Chang Kong excitedly, hoping that he would get their signal. Hurry up, Captain. How can we let this great opportunity slip by? Lang Chang Kong naturally knew what his men were implying. However, he found it hard to open his mouth the moment he looked at Chu Quan Gren. Besides saving his life yesterday, he had also brought everyone on a looting spree in the outer zone today, they had already taken a lot of advantage of Chu Quan Gren. Brother Ling, can you tell me the current situation in this inner zone? Before Lang Chang Kong could say anything, Chu Quan Gren asked him instead. All right. Lang Chang Kong nodded and explained the current situation in the ancient battlefield's inner zone to him. Although he did not come here that often, he had heard a lot of information about that area from the stronger adventurers in Sun Soil City. In the inner zone, due to the change in the ferocious Qi concentration, the number of tormented souls far exceeds that of the outer zone, and they're generally much stronger as well. The inner zone's ten tormented are the most well known among them, and they are officially acknowledged by the Sun Soil City as the ten most powerful tormented souls. Each of them possesses the strength of an honorable supreme. The ten tormented souls are namely the tormented great demon, tormented saber wielder. Chu Quan Gren listened patiently. After that, he laughed. I'll be frank with you, Brother Ling. I'm afraid I'm going to be spending quite some time inside the inner zone and might even venture deeper into the core area if there's a chance. So do you and your men still want to come with me? Everyone was so shocked that their faces paled. Venture deeper into the core area. That's a place where even the sages feared to go. Brother Lang pondered for a while before he replied, Brother Chu, I know you're an extraordinary person and have some plans of your own, hence I won't comment on that. Since my men and I are weak, we shall leave on our own for fear that we might hold you back on your journey. That was the reality. The inner zone was already chocked full of dangers and risks, let alone the core area. Lang Chong Kong did not want to drag both Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu behind if he and his men were to have trouble facing any horrifying or dangerous encounters. Leaving them was the best option for them. Although the others were slightly disappointed when they heard this, they could only accept it since it was Lang Chang Kong's decision. Besides, Lang Chong Kong was right. Anyone with their level of strength was not suited to explore in the inner zone at all. Chapter 232, The Yun Xiao Troop, The Rumored Lu Kingdom's Treasure Brother Chu, I know I can't talk you out of this, but I should still remind you that the core area of the ancient battlefield is an extremely terrifying area where even the sages fear to go. Please, Brother Chu, I hope you'll consider my advice. All right, I understand. Chu Quan Gren nodded gently. After that, he looked at Lang Chang Kong's sword and chuckled. Brother Lang. Can you hand over that sword in your hand? Although Lang Chang Kong was confused, he still took out his sword. Chu Quan Gren then took that sword and made a sword hand sign before he gently traced it over that blade, imbuing a surge of his deist rhyme and sword chi within the sword. This sword now contains a trace of my sword chi. Brother Ling, if you encounter any dangers on your journey back, please activate it and save everyone. Chu Quan Gren smiled. Many thanks, Brother Lang replied solemnly. Both parties then left separately. Along with Lan Yu, Chu Quan Gren headed towards the inner zone and explored its depths. With his treasure locating skill, Chu Quan Gren found quite a few treasures on the ancient battlefield. Although most of them were in a bad condition, 
taking them back to Black Heaven sect and handing them over to Elder Ruin for their disposal would serve as another valuable source of income as well. These items could then be used as the sect's daily expenses. Not bad, a broken sage weapon. Selling this will gain us around a million and eight hundred thousand top tier soul stones I suppose. Chu Quan Gren said as he held a broken armor in his hand. He had just taken that armor from a skeleton. That skeleton had been dead for many years, but its bones were still incredibly rigid and tough, and it glowed with a tint of gold and iron color. It was a sign that the skeleton used to be a prominent figure during its lifetime. It had the cultivation of an honorable supreme at least. Seeing that even an honorable supreme had perished here, one could only imagine the number of violent wars that the ancient battlefield had gone through during all these years. If the inner zone was as such, let alone the core area. Chu Quang Gren kept the broken armor inside his yin and yang ring and was just about to leave. However, a violent burst of Daoist rhyme suddenly erupted and was attacking them from not far away. Chu Quang Gren frowned, and before he could even do anything, Lan Yu had already dispersed that surge of Daoist rhyme. Her cold gaze shot into the void as she yelled, Reveal yourself. A circle of ripples then appeared in the void. A man clad in black leather armor with a scar on his face looked at both of them and chuckled. That's quite some strength you have there. Killing and pillaging the treasures of others. Chu Quang Gren suddenly looked interested. Although the matter of killing and pillaging were not uncommon in the world of cultivation, that was Chu Quang Gren's first time encountering such a thing. Boy, hand over the broken sage weapon to me, and I might consider sparing your life. Otherwise. Otherwise what? Without waiting for the man with a scar on his face to finish his sentence, Chu Quang Gren interrupted him and said, You're going to kill me until there's nothing left, or until I wish I was never born. Scarface's brows furrowed, and as he looked at the calm Chu Quang Gren, his heart could not help but beat violently. There's something weird about this boy. He then glanced at Lan Yu. Seeing that the young lady easily broke through his attack, it was obvious that her strength should not be underestimated. Besides, there was also a Chu Quang Gren, whose strength was still unknown to him. If a fight were to start, it might not end well for him. He thought about it carefully, going through it over and over again in his mind before Scarface grunted. He then turned his head and ran away towards the distance without saying anything. Both Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu were slightly taken aback. That's it. What the hell did he want? He left just like that. Chu Quan Gren wondered. It turned out different than what he expected. Lan Yu shook her head as well. Beats me. All right, forget about him. Let's carry on. Scarface kept on running before he eventually came across a troop of people. There were many people in that troop, and each of them possessed a fierce temperament as well a sign that they were not ordinary people. If someone from Sun Soil City was there, they would surely recognize that troop. That troop was one of the most elite ones in Sun Soil City as their captain was a top-tier swordsman, ranked 10th in the Hundred Swords Spectrum. That group was known as the Yun Xiao Troop. What's the matter, Old Seventh? Seeing how Scarface rushed back, a spear-wielding cultivator asked. Scarface replied, Fourth brother, get a few strong cultivators to follow me. We're going to find two people who have a broken sage weapon in their possession. Hey? Broken sage weapon? Fourth brother's eyes lit up with excitement. A broken sage weapon was a valuable treasure indeed. How strong are those two? I don't know. Scarface shook his head. Fourth brother almost spew blood upon hearing that. He then glared at Scarface with disbelief, as if he thought Scarface was messing with him. What's the point of coming back if you don't even know how powerful they are? Scarface continued, although we didn't fight, I have a feeling that those two are very powerful. I alone will not be a match for both of them, hence I've come back to seek help from you, hoping that we can go and steal their items together. Fourth brother's face turned grim at Scarface's words. Having lived a life of looting and pillaging in the ancient battlefield for so many years, all of them had long developed a keen sense of danger. Since Scarface had put it that way, it meant that the other party was probably not to be trifled with. However, a broken sage weapon was very tempting indeed. Old Seventh, since you've returned, let's continue our journey. At that moment, Li Xiaoun, the Yun Xiao troop leader, ranked ninth in the Hundred Swords Spectrum, walked over and said lightly. Both Scarface and Fourth Brother glanced at each other when they heard his words. They then told him about the broken sage weapon. Li Xiaoun frowned slightly as he replied, Forget about it, it's just a broken sage weapon. We should complete our employer's job for now. He glanced at the young man behind him. The young man was sitting on a rock with his eyes slightly closed. Although he did not seem powerful, everyone looked at him with fear in their eyes. Even Li Yongxian was very cautious and fearful of that person. This was because the young man was one of the top sky prides in the world, the Shang clan's young emperor of the Scarlet Phoenix domain. Shang Han. Shang Han slowly opened his eyes and said towards Li Xiaoun who was nearby, Can we continue our journey now? Yes, of course. Li Xiaoun nodded and then asked, We've been searching for seven days now. 
Young Emperor, are you sure this is the correct direction? There's no mistake. Shang Han took out an ancient bronze short sword. I can clearly feel that the resonance between the Lu clan's ancient sword and that ancient Lu kingdom is getting increasingly stronger. We can surely find the ancient city in this direction. Everyone's eyes lit up with excitement. The Lu kingdom was a dynasty that once existed tens of thousands of years ago. It was said that the strength and foundation of that kingdom were far greater than that of the royal Azure dynasty today. However, such a kingdom was instantly destroyed in a great battle tens of thousands of years ago. The capital city of that dynasty had since been buried in the sand among the strong winds and sandstorms. People had been searching for the ancient Lu kingdom for many years, hoping to find its treasure that was rumored to be even more terrifying than the sage orthodoxies. The only thing was that no one had succeeded as of now. However, that troop might succeed this time. Even an honorable supreme like Li Ziaoun was already extremely excited at that thought, let alone the rest of the team. If I can get my hands on the Lu Kingdom's treasures, I'll never have to worry about anything else for the rest of my life. Haha, <laughs> I will leave here once and for all when the time comes. Tisk tisk, I bet just the Lu Kingdom's treasures alone will contain a vast supply of resources like supreme weapons and supreme elixirs as well. No one has managed to find it for so many years. In the end, it was us from the Yun Xiao troop that succeeded. Shang Han glanced at the team members and grinned. After all, those people were just a tool for him to find the treasures. Yet they still dared to think about sharing the riches with him? What a joke. As long as I get that item from the Lu Kingdom, who else can ever go against me among the younger generation? Even if it's Chu Quan Gren, I can still fight and compete against him. Chapter 233, Into the Ancient City, Looting the Treasures, A Boundary Emperor Weapon At the thought of Chu Quan Gren, a cold glint shot out of Shang Han's eyes. He came to the Azure Dragon Domain four years ago, initially intending to use Princess Ling Long's godly deist physique to break into the Battle Monarch realm. However, he did not expect Chu Quan Gren to be one step ahead of him instead. Later in the Royal Azure Palace, he was defeated in public by Chu Quan Gren's two sword attacks. That incident had been lingering in his heart like an unbreakable knot that had not been opened ever since that day. As the era of great battles kicked off, Shang Han had never once dared to slack off in these past four years. He had been practicing rigorously, obtained an emperor's essence to maintain his position of young emperor, gaining insights into the emperor's essence, and improving his cultivation by leaps and bounds. On top of some other opportunity of fortune, his current strength was one of the best among the young emperors. Nevertheless, he was not happy at all. That was because the achievements of Chu Quangren, the one whom he regarded as his lifelong enemy, had greatly exceeded his expectations and that of everyone else in the world as well. Killing hundred thousand demonic cultivators, mentally sparring with a sage, taming the godly phoenix, becoming the Black Heaven sect leader, killing sages. Anything among that list of achievements was enough to outclass him, the so-called young emperor. To everyone else, his achievements were akin to comparing fireflies to a shining moon, it was terribly insignificant. Just you wait, Chu Quan Gren. The moment I get that item from the Lu Kingdom, I will brutally defeat you once and for all. A Chu. Chu Quan Gren sneezed. Master, oh no, did you catch a cold? Beside him, Lan Yu asked with concern. Maybe my enemies are cursing me behind my back. Chu Quan Gren replied dismissively. Let's continue ahead. From what I can sense, there's a huge pile of treasures about a thousand miles away from here. Chu Quan Gren said in surprise. Although there were many treasures and opportunity of fortune on the ancient battlefield, it was quite a rare situation to see so many treasures piled together. Did he bump into a treasure hoard? Soon after, he and Lan Yu arrived at the location of the piled up treasures, but all they could see was a vast sand dune before them. Chu Quan Gren scanned the area with his spiritual thoughts. Nothing was found. However, the treasure locating skill's sensitive response to the treasures was telling Chu Quan Gren that the pile of treasures was indeed located at where the sand dunes were right now. Unless there's an enchanted boundary. Chu Quan Gren murmured. That topic was what he lacked knowledge in. He was completely clueless when it came to things like boundaries and formation spells. There was no way he could draw an item from the fantasy roulette that could make him a formation grandmaster, right? Besides, he had already used up his chance for the fantasy roulette today anyway. With this treasure mountain before me, Am I going to go back empty-handed? There is no way that would happen, right? At that moment, waves of ripples suddenly appeared in the void. Like a mirage, an extremely magnificent ancient kingdom immediately emerged in front of Madman Chu and Lan Yu. What's this? Lan Yu was a little surprised. Lan Yu, we've struck the motherload of all treasures this time. Chu Quan Gren laughed. Let's go. Both of them then hurried towards the ancient kingdom. When they arrived at the gate of the ancient city, Chu Quan Gren saw a dilapidated sign hanging high up there. Lu Kingdom. He suddenly thought of something. This name seems familiar. There used to be a kingdom in the past with that name. 
Chu Quangren had gone through many books during his spare time in the past year. From cultivation manuscripts to biographies, he had read every kind of book. Among them were some records about the Lu Kingdom. According to the rumors, the ancient Lu Kingdom mysteriously disappeared after a great battle. Countless people have been searching for this ancient city for all these years, but I didn't expect I'd find it here today. Chu Quangren laughed. The heavens would, of course, favor a handsome person like him. With that, the two of them entered the ancient kingdom. There were signs of destruction everywhere inside the ancient city. Skeletal remains were scattered on the ground, dissipating and turning into dust with a light touch. Even the bones that belonged to previous honorables could hardly resist the erosion of time. What caused that battle to start? To wipe out an entire country, could it be the sage war that the eternal sage ruler mentioned? A puzzled Lan Yu asked. It shouldn't be. The sage war mentioned by the eternal sage ruler occurred 50,000 years ago, and the demise of the ancient Lu kingdom was more than 30,000 years ago. The time period does not match up, so there should be another reason. Chu Quanggren shook his head. However, those were not Chu Quanggren's reasons to explore that area. What he wanted most at the moment was the treasures in this country. Thirty miles ahead, there are sage weapons, supreme weapons. That was feedback from the treasure locating skill. Chu Quanggren soon came to the palace that was at the center of the Lu Kingdom. Although that palace was very large, it was already in ruins. Its past glory was vaguely visible from the surface and it seemed no worse than the royal Azure Dynasty's palace. He then arrived at the palace's treasury. After pushing open the gates, a gust of air that had long been sealed within came rushing out towards him. The treasury was full of dust. Chu Quanggren simply waved his sleeves, which created a gust of wind that swept away the dust around him. Suddenly, after tens of thousands of years, the countless treasures once again shone brightly and illuminated its surroundings. Treasured swords, armor, medicinal pills, peerless forging materials, and even jade scrolls that contained different cultivation techniques. Countless treasures were laid before Chu Quanggren's eyes. That's a lot. Lan Yu's mouth was slightly agape and she could not help but be shocked at the entire treasury before her. Lan Yu, let's do it. Chu Quanggren chuckled. Both of them then walked into the treasury and began to store the treasures into their yin and yang rings one after another. There were just too many treasures there. It took both of them more than an hour to finish looting the whole treasury. Moreover, that was only looting. They still had yet to sort through everything. Otherwise, it would take them much longer than an hour. Master, we've made such a large haul this time. I alone have six or seven sage weapons with me, and even more for supreme weapons, not to mention some of the other rarer or more valuable treasures. Lan Yu's eyes lit up as she spoke. You're right, with this stash of treasure, the Black Heaven Sex Foundation will no doubt be on a higher level now, Chu Quanggren said with satisfaction. With all these treasures, the Lu Kingdom must have been a great nation in the past. But it's a shame that it was wiped out in the end. Lan Yu lamented with sorrow. Nothing could last forever in this world. Even a strong nation like Lu Kingdom could not escape its fate of total annihilation. Master, do you think that besides us, there'd be anyone who will find their way into this ancient Lu Kingdom? Lan Yu suddenly thought of it and was curious. I don't know. Even if there are, surely it'll be many years later, Chu Quanggren replied. After that, a playful smile was etched on his face as if he had thought of something. He then walked up to one of the pillars inside the treasury. He made a sword hand sign before surges of sword chi shot out. He was carving some words into the pillars. Chu Quanggren was here. Chu Quanggren looked at the four words on the pillar with satisfaction. Beside him, Lan Yu chuckled and shook her head. Master really is playful sometimes. Let's go. There's something else inside the palace. Chu Quanggren grinned. What is it? It's a boundary emperor weapon. At that, Lan Yu could not help her astonishment. There's a boundary emperor weapon inside this palace. That's right. According to my treasure locating, there's indeed a boundary sage weapon here. Let's go. Chu Quanggren was a little excited. After all, the value of a boundary sage weapon was so great that even all the treasures in the entire treasury combined could not compare to it. Chapter 234 the Lu Kingdom's past, a million tormented souls, Shang Han, and others enter the ancient city. The Boundary Emperor weapon that Chu Quanggren had sensed was located inside the main hall of the palace. However, the moment both of them entered the main palace hall, they immediately felt that something was off as the air within the hall was filled with a terrifyingly ferocious qi. What an unbelievable surge of ferocious qi! Lan Yu could not help but feel shocked. Following that, both of them saw something with a golden robe standing above the palace. It was a skeleton. The surface of this skeleton was radiating with golden light and had countless deist runes circulating it, which connected to a long halberd in his hand. The skeleton had an indescribable sense of stalwart to it. Besides that, there were countless deist runes engraved all around the palace too. 
The terrifying ferocious Qi seemed to be trapped in the palace because of the Daoist runes, which had nowhere else to spread to. It seems like this is the Lu Kingdom's ruler. But why does he have all these runes all around him? Lan Yu said in surprise. As if sensing that someone had entered, a golden ray of light burst out from the body of the Lu Kingdom's ruler before it transformed into a figure before them. It was a stalwart man dressed in royal robes. He had an extremely majestic appearance and looked similar to the Lu Kingdom's ruler before his death. Explorer from the future. I'm the ruler of this Lu Kingdom. That stalwart man spoke. Lan Yu immediately readied her defense battle form. Chu Quan Gren chuckled. Relax, it's just an image. I've presumed that you've noticed something abnormal about this palace. The main culprit of all this was none other than the Lu Kingdom's subordinate city-state, the Tranquil Kingdom. The Tranquil Kingdom's ruler was the one who caused all this chaos. Seeking to overthrow the Lu Kingdom, he did not hesitate to enter the Forbidden Area and steal the source of Ferocious Qi. He used a million soldiers from his country as a sacrifice and created a great invincible tormented army. However, the tormented army contained too much Ferocious Qi that they could not be controlled by the Tranquil Kingdom's ruler. So in return, the Tranquil Kingdom suffered, which led to the wipeout of the whole country. After that, the Tormented Army invaded the Lu Kingdom, conquering all thirteen cities in the kingdom within a single day. The Tormented Army headed straight to the kingdom's royal capital. Knowing that the Lu Kingdom was done for, and to prevent this great Tormented Army from causing harm to the citizens, I resorted to using this Boundary Emperor weapon, the Heavenly Halberd as the base of a formation. I used myself as bait and set up this great spirit sealing formation to seal this Tormented Army beneath this palace. After the Tormented Army was sealed, I then activated the formation spell to hide the city within the void. Explorer from the future, for the sake of the world and your safety, do not remove this halberd. Leave this place quickly, and beware. Always beware. After explaining the details of what had happened, the Lu Kingdom's ruler disappeared. That was just a recording that was left behind by the Lu Kingdom's ruler. It would only be triggered the moment someone entered the palace. So that was what happened. Both of their doubts were cleared the moment they learned about what happened to the Lu Kingdom. So that was how the Lu Kingdom fell into ruin. Forbidden Area, Ferocious Qi Source it's referring to the core area of the ancient battlefield, which was where the Sage War took place. At that time, this Lu Kingdom was not yet enveloped by a surge of ferocious Qi. It was only because the Tranquil Kingdom's ruler wanted to overthrow the Lu Kingdom's rule so he went to the Forbidden Area to steal the so-called source of ferocious Qi, and by some method, sacrificed a million soldiers in his army and turned them all into tormented souls. But he didn't expect that these million tormented souls would be beyond his control, and instead brought about the destruction of both the Tranquil Kingdom and the Lu Kingdom. And right now, those one million tormented souls are right under our very feet. The both of them glanced at the ground. Countless runes that overflowed with mysterious deist rhymes were engraved on it, and it connected to the halberd that was in the hands of the Lu Kingdom's ruler's corpse. Master, what should we do now? Let's leave. Chu Quan Gren said indifferently, a million tormented souls is no joke. Besides, they've been suppressed for so long that the strength of ferocious chi they have will be inconceivable. If that breaks out, the Sun Soil City and the people nearby will be wiped out by this disaster. Although letting go of a Boundary Emperor weapon was a shame, it was still a worthwhile trip to be able to get their hands on the contents of the entire Lu Kingdom's treasury. Furthermore, he already possessed the Emperor weapon, Sacred Emerald Sword Case, and with the Descendant Self Sword's growth potential, it was only a matter of time before it turned into an Emperor weapon. After all, there was no need to bring harm to countless innocent people just because of a Boundary Emperor weapon. The both of them left the Lu Kingdom. When they came out, the ancient city had already disappeared. It seems that the Lu Kingdom's enchanted boundary has existed for too long and as a result, it'll fail occasionally which made the kingdom appear. We came across it at just the right time. Chu Quan Gren looked at the sand dunes in front of him and smiled. It seems that luck is on our side today. Lan Yu felt it was quite unbelievable. If they could chance upon it with such low probability, it could be considered more than just a stroke of simple good luck. It's all thanks to my lucky halo. I can't help it. As such, both of them turned and left the sand dunes. Although he had obtained the Lu Kingdom's treasures, Chu Quan Gren was still very curious about the ancient battlefield's core area. He was still interested to take a look. Shortly after both of them had left, a troop of people arrived at the ancient Lu Kingdom's vicinity. They were the Yun Xiao troop and Shang Han who came to find the Lu Kingdom's treasures. The resonance of the Lu clan's ancient sword is at its peak. It seems that the ancient Lu Kingdom is here, Shang Han said as he held the trembling Lu clan's ancient sword and looked around. There's an ancient city here. Who are you kidding? There's nothing here at all? Are you messing with us? It is indeed here. Shang Han replied lightly, it's rumored that the Lu Kingdom has a spatial formation spell that can form an enchanted boundary, enabling the city to be hidden inside the void. Although we can't see it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Then how do we find it? Whenever an enchanted boundary is formed, 
only the Lu clan's ancient sword that is owned by the Lu kingdom's royalty can be used to open it. Everyone, please step aside. Shang Han then threw the ancient bronze sword into the air and proceeded to imbue it with spiritual power. As the ancient sword radiated with light, ripples then started to appear in the void. It's working. That's great news. Everyone was overjoyed. Hum. At that moment not far away, a ray of saber light which contained a terrifying ferocious chi suddenly swept towards them. Li Xiaoyun's face changed a little before he quickly moved to resist it. The moment he struck out a slash, the sword ray collided with the saber light. An explosion instantly erupted and caused the void to rumble violently. Not far away, a tormented soul that was a long saber suddenly appeared in front of everyone, and its surging ferocious chi immediately rose into the sky. Li Xiaoyun's expression suddenly turned serious. It's the tormented saber wielder, one of the inner zone's ten tormented. The expressions of Li Xiaoyun and others changed drastically. The tormented saber wielder, one of the inner zone's ten tormented is a tormented soul with the strength of an honorable supreme. Damn, curse our bad luck. Of all the times we had, why do we have to encounter it now? Quickly, prepare for battle. Just when everyone was preparing to deal with the tormented saber wielder, roaring sounds suddenly rang out from their surroundings and strange tormented souls rushed towards them from all directions. Their violent ferocious chi instantly enveloped the whole area. Everyone gasped. There's. There are so many tormented souls. God damn it. Shang Han's expression turned slightly grim as he said to Li Xiaoyun, it'll take a while for me to open a path through the enchanted boundary. All of you must hang on and buy me some time. Otherwise, everything we've done so far will go to waste. I got it. Li Xiaoyun replied with his teeth gritted. Attack. A gruesome battle instantly broke out. Li Xiaoyun was ranked 10th on the Hundred Sword Spectrum, hence possessed an extreme amount of power, and since he was also an honorable supreme, he personally took on the tormented saber wielder in battle. The rest of the tormented souls were left for the others to deal with. The battle was extremely violent and tragic. One clash alone was enough for the Yun Xiao troop to suffer casualties. Various deist rhymes flickered in the void as multiple surges of spiritual power and ferocious chi intertwined, rumbled and collided against each other. The shockwaves caused by the battle were so powerful that it rumbled the very earth. While the rest of the people were busy dealing with the tormented souls, Shang Han urged forth the Lu clan's ancient sword to hit the enchanted boundary. Eventually, a crack opened through. That majestic Lu kingdom finally appeared before everyone's eyes. Let's go. Chapter 235, Not a single soul stone to be found, the reckless Shang Han. Go. Let's enter the ancient city. Shang Han was the first to rush into the enchanted boundary. The others soon followed suit. The cracks in the enchanted boundary slowly disappeared after Li Xiaoyun and the others rushed inside. The group of tormented souls could only wander around the area for a while before they left after a while. Inside the ancient city's enchanted boundary. Li Xiaoyun and the others breathed a sigh of relief. I can't believe we encountered the tormented saber wielder. That's too dangerous. You're right. Take a headcount of everyone, and find out our losses and casualties. Only then did everyone begin to find out the number of casualties they had sustained and realized that the losses from this battle were higher than expected as more than half of the Yun Xiao troop were either dead or injured. Li Xiaoyun's expression was extremely unpleasant. Damn it. The Lu Kingdom's treasures are right in front of you and are now yours for the taking, so their deaths are not in vain, Shang Han said at this moment. At that, everyone's eyes lit up with excitement and desire. They looked at the ancient city ahead of them and gulped. The Lu Kingdom's treasure. Countless people had dreamt of finding the Lu Kingdom's treasure just like that and I can't believe no one knew why as well. One of the troop members lamented. Who knows? Let's focus on finding the treasures instead. It should be inside the palace. Everyone immediately headed to the palace, and when they saw the palace treasury, everyone quickly rushed in with great excitement. However, the next moment left them stunned. Where's the treasure? Why is there nothing here? The Lu Kingdom's treasure. Where's the Lu Kingdom's treasure? It seemed like everyone could not accept that fact. They had been through much hardship and sacrificed many good men to get here all for the Lu Kingdom's treasure. Despite that, the treasures were now gone. Those with a slightly weaker deist core almost spewed blood. It can't be. The foundation of the Lu Kingdom is far stronger than the likes of the Royal Azure Dynasty, how can there be nothing inside here? Even Shang Han was dumbfounded. Wait. Everyone take a look over here. What's that? Suddenly, someone exclaimed as they stared at a certain pillar. Everyone then looked over and saw a line of characters on it. Although they could not see the words clearly, they could feel a surge of horrifying and razor-sharp sword-based deist rhyme gushing towards their faces. Li Xiaoyun was a sword cultivator. Moreover, he was ranked 10th in the Hundred Sword Spectrum as well. Yet even he was taken aback when he felt that sword-based deist rhyme and his face hardened. What a terrifying sword-based deist rhyme. 
the person that left those words here is no doubt a powerful sword cultivator. Li Xiaoyun stared at the words and read them out. Chu Quang Gren was here. Everyone suddenly turned silent. The moment Chu Quang Gren's name was mentioned, it shocked everyone as if it was imbued with magical power. All of their expressions changed drastically. Chu Quang Gren, how is that possible? He's the one who got the Lu Kingdom's treasure in the end. God damn it, how did he even get in? After knowing who got the Lu Kingdom's treasure, not only did everyone have no intention of stealing the treasure from him, but they were even more disappointed instead. It was all because the one who took the treasure was named Chu Quang Gren. Chu Quang Gren is ranked first in the Hundred Swords Spectrum. No wonder he had such a terrifying sword-based deist rhyme. His reputation is no doubt well deserved. Li Xiaoyun murmured. Beside him, Shang Han's face was red with anger. The spiritual power from his body raged uncontrollably and bombarded the surrounding walls. He was on the brink of going mad with rage. He had gone through countless ancient archives to look for the Lu clan's ancient sword and took even greater lengths to find and get to the Lu kingdom. Despite all of that, he never expected Chu Quan Gren to be one step ahead. It's you again. It's you again. Why are you one step ahead of me, damn it? Everyone could not help but feel a hint of pity for Shang Han, who was venting his anger in a craze. They knew that Shang Han was a young emperor and one of the most remarkable sky prides in the world at that. However, who would dare call themselves a sky pride before Chu Quan Gren? Every so-called sky pride was not worth mentioning before the likes of him. Captain, what should we do now? One of the Yun Xiao troop members asked unwillingly. They had overcome many hardships just to get here. Were they going to return empty-handed because of this? No one would ever feel satisfied at the thought of that. What else can we do then? Do you wish to seek Chu Quan Gren and fight him until your very death? Li Xiaoyun replied. Why would I ever dare to do that? That troop member quickly shook his head. Seek Chu Quan Gren to fight him until their very deaths? Stop joking. That was the same as seeking death instead. Among all the people in this world, how many of them would dare to find and fight Chu Quan Gren? Even a sage would have to reconsider that notion. Sigh, I can't believe that the treasure was taken by Chu Quan Gren. What a waste of our effort. Everyone was depressed and listless. Relying on their last glimmer of hope, everyone searched through the treasury one more time in hopes that there were some treasures left. Treasures that were left behind or missed by Chu Quan Gren for instance. However, not even a soul stone was to be found. Chu Quan Gren's looting was too thorough. Captain, we've discovered something new here. At that time, Li Xiaoyun received a message from some of the other troop members. Everyone soon came to the palace main hall hopefully. Inside the main hall, they saw the countless runes and also the Lu Kingdom's ruler standing in the palace with the Heaven's Halberd in his hands. The moment he saw the Heaven's Halberd, Shang Han's expression changed from slight disbelief to great delight. The Heaven's Halberd. It's the Heaven's Halberd. Hold on a minute, are you kidding me? Did Chu Quan Gren just leave behind the most valuable treasure here? Did he not take it away with him? He's not that stupid, right? Deep down, Shang Han was extremely delighted. That Heaven's Halberd was his biggest goal for this trip. After seeing Chu Quang Gren's words earlier, he initially lost all hope of obtaining the Heaven's Halberd. Yet never did he expect that Chu Quang Gren would leave this most valuable boundary emperor weapon in the Lu Kingdom. Shang Han could not wait to enter the palace. Then, the body of the Lu Kingdom's ruler trembled slightly, and a golden light shot out to reveal an image of what he looked like when he was alive. The recorded video began to play before them. Explorer from the future. I'm the ruler of this Lu Kingdom. The Lu Kingdom's ruler started to talk about the past. He told everyone about the million unit tormented army that was sealed beneath the palace and warned them not to take the heaven's halberd away. Everyone was extremely shocked when they heard this. No one expected such a terrifying thing to be right under their very feet. Captain, what should we do now? Let's leave. This is not something we should mess with. Li Xiaoyun simply said. Everyone took a reluctant look at that heaven's halberd. However, at that time, everyone witnessed Shang Han walking towards heaven's halberd with a crazed look on his face despite the Lu Kingdom's ruler's warning. This boundary emperor weapon belongs to me. How can I possibly give up on it? If Chu Quan Gren did not dare to take it, then all the more reason for me to do so. If Chu Quan Gren is benevolent, righteous and takes into account the well-being of the people in this world, then I shall follow my heart and take this boundary emperor weapon away. I shall let the whole world know that Chu Quan Gren is weaker than me. He gripped the heaven's halberd strongly and a surge of spiritual power erupted from his body before he yanked the heaven's halberd away from Lu Kingdom's hand. Suddenly, the entire palace and even the entire city trembled like crazy. Many cracks soon began to appear on the ground. It was as if something horrifying was about to emerge from within. Inside the palace, the pieces of golden runes started to shatter one by one. That's not good, let's get the hell out of here. Extremely terrified, Li Xiaoyun rushed outside the palace with the rest of the troop members in a panic. 
Chapter 236, The Tormented Army is Unleashed, It's Apocalyptic, The White Rope General. Upon retrieving the Heaven's Halberd, Shang Han immediately fled the scene before Li Xiaoyun and the rest could even react. The group was cursing incessantly at Shang Han from behind. Damn it, Shang Han. Has he gone mad? He didn't even care for our lives if it meant he could have the Heaven's Halberd. What a bastard. There's no use saying anything else now. Let's get out of here. Everyone quickly made their way out of the city. Just when they had managed to escape the palace, the entire palace immediately collapsed as an enormous fissure formed below it. Amid the fissure was a terrifying explosion of ferocious chi. Li Xiaoyun took a glance backward. That sight alone gave him numbing goosebumps on his scalp. From the crack, a flood of black mass that was formed by countless tormented souls was gushing out. Accompanied by incessant wailing, the grotesque grimaces of these tormented souls sent a chill down everyone's spine. Li Xiaoyun could feel his deist core shake like never before, and he could not help but immediately make haste. Kill, kill. Kill everyone. Uh. I'm free, I'm free. The bloodthirsty roar, screams, and even the inaudible murmurs of the countless tormented souls merged into the most horrifying symphony of hell. Their ferocious chi and anger flooded the entire realm. Since the enchanted boundary of Lu City could not contain such energy, it shattered on the spot, freeing the tormented souls into the open. For a moment, the momentum of the tormented souls shook the entire ancient battlefield, and countless tormented souls let out an uneasy sounding roar. Even the tormented souls that had survived in the ancient battlefield for many years were shocked by the emergence of the ancient tormented army. The physical realm could hardly withhold such terrifying gush of ferocious chi. Oh dear, what have we done? Li Xiaoyun and the group escaped the enchanted boundary only to be greeted by a sky clouded by tormented souls. They could not help but gulp as their faces filled with shock. At that moment, several tormented souls had already noticed their presence. Dressed in armors and armed with weapons, the tormented souls glared at them, and without saying a word, they charged towards them ferociously. They're alive, kill them. The tormented souls charged towards Li Xiaoyun and the rest. Having had their core shaken by the oppressive ferocious Qi, Li Xianyun's troop could no longer react in time. Their delay had caused them dire consequences, as one by one, the tormented souls chopped and tore the troop members alive. Quick, gather around! Li Xiaoyun yelled. The remaining members hastily latched onto him. All Li Xiaoyun did was retrieve a pearl and crush it into pieces. Then, a mythical stream of deist rhyme materialized and the surrounding sands began to levitate, forming into an enclosed sand bubble that shielded them from the tormented souls. After several attempts at breaking through the barrier, the tormented army did not bother any longer. Instead, they looked towards Sun Soil City and charged forward. They had been sealed under the palace for thousands of years, their rage chi could shake the entire earth. It was time for them to unwind. What better ways than to indulge in genocide and destructions? In Sun Soil City, several strong cultivators could sense their approach. This is bad, an army of tormented souls is attacking. What? Tormented souls, lots and lots of them. Their ferocious chi is terrifying. This is something no humans could handle. We should leave now. Oh dear, at this scale, it's only a matter of time before Sun Soil City turns into a living hell. We cannot stay any longer. Run. The cultivators began to escape frantically from Sun Soil City. The hotel was in a state of panic. The guests quickly packed up their belongings before they escaped to safety. Qian Fugui was smiling bitterly at all that unfolded. This is the end of my hotel now. This is it. With the arrival of the tormented army, Sun Soil City would be utterly destroyed. There was no way his little hotel would survive. Boss, let's go. When the tormented souls arrive, I can't guarantee I'll be able to protect you, said a green shadow who manifested behind Qian Fugui. All right. Qian Fugui smacked his lips. A few hundred miles away from Sun Soil City laid the headquarters of a sage orthodox. It was an honorable orthodoxy known as the Horizon Wing Sect. On this day, the bells of the Horizon Wing Sect had tolled, signaling the incoming situation that would place the entire orthodoxy in a life-or-death situation. Countless disciples hastily gathered around, their expressions solemn and stern. The current Horizon Wing sect master was dressed in a full set of armor as he addressed the disciples below him, I have sensed that a wave of terrifying energy has awakened in the ancient battlefield and is making its way here. It's the awakening of a massive army one that's comprised of a myriad of terrifying tormented souls. Once they've breached Sun Soil City, their next victim would be the countless citizens that are under the care of Horizon Wing sect. I have requested for reinforcements from the Black Heaven sect. However, it would take a while before they'd arrive, which is why I shall be leading a troop of my own forward to defend this onslaught of tormented souls. It is also a crucial battle that's destined to inflict a mass casualty on our people. If any of you wishes to retreat, please leave immediately. At that, the disciples immediately engaged in discussions. It was not long before dozens left one after another. However, 
those who remained all had a determined look on their faces. Most of them were born and bred on this very land, so this place had many sentimental values to them. There was no way they could sit back and watch the tormented souls spill blood on this very place. Very well, let us fight against this army of tormented souls. Charge! The Horizon Wing sect master roared. Soon, multiple rays of light flew towards Sun Soil City. Somewhere deep in the ancient battlefield. Chu Quang Gren and Lan Yu arrived at the border of the core area. He could sense that the amount of ferocious chi contained within the core area far surpassed that of the inner zone. It was a truly forbidden area. Master, do we still want to move forward? Lan Yu asked curiously. The ferocious chi within the core area was enough to threaten even a young emperor like her. Once they descended further, it was likely that her abilities would not help her survive. Even so, there was no way she would refuse if venturing deeper was something Chu Quang Gren wanted. Chu Quang Gren peeped into the core area and contemplated further. Considering his abilities and the tricks he had under his sleeves, exploring the core area was definitely something doable. However, he reminded himself that the core area was still one of the ten great forbidden areas. He would definitely regret should anything bad happen to Lan Yu. At. Suddenly, Chu Quang Gren was shocked. Within his vision, he had picked up on a white figure that had manifested in a far corner of the core area. It was a frail figure dressed in a white robe, armed with a black long spear, and its face was covered by a visor. It was not long before the figure subsequently vanished from Chu Quang Gren's vision. Lan Yu did not even notice the figure's presence at all. Is that, the white-robed general? Chu Quang Gren was surprised. He did not expect to witness one of the seven great mysterious manifestations here. Shortly after witnessing the white-robed general, Chu Quang Gren abruptly sensed the presence of a terrifying ferocious chi and rage chi behind him. He turned around to see that an enormous black mass had erupted into the sky and was charging towards Sun Soil City. That's, the tormented army of Tranquil Kingdom. Chu Quang Gren's eyes widened. He would never have thought that the tormented army would be unleashed shortly after he had just passed by them. Chapter 237, Shattered with One Palm, What Happened Here, I've Completely Forgotten. Master. Lan Yu's entire face paled upon witnessing the tormented army. Come, let's take a look. Chu Quang Gren frowned slightly at the sight and dashed towards the ancient Lu Kingdom. At that moment, the enchanted boundary of Lu Kingdom had been completely decimated by the tormented army, and the huge ancient city was now completely exposed in the open air. Outside the city, a spherical shield that was forged out of sand particles began to jerk before the shield disintegrated and the sand began to crumble to the ground. Li Xiaoun and several other troop members took a quick peep at their surroundings and sighed a breath of relief. Finally the tormented souls are gone. Phew, what a close call. That was way too scary. Such powerful rage chi, I've never witnessed one of such magnitude before during all my time in the ancient battlefield. I'm afraid Sun Soil City will soon be gone. The group said in remorse. Damn it, it's all that bastard Shang Han's fault. He just took the emperor weapon away like that and lifted the seal, cursed a scar-faced member angrily. Upon the mention of Shang Han's name, the rest were furious as well. This journey had cost them a huge fortune. Not only did they lose so many lives, but they had also failed to acquire even a single ounce of treasure despite overcoming great challenges to discover the ancient Lu Kingdom. What more was that the culprit behind this whole tormented army mess was the young emperor of the Shang clan. With their power and background, there was no way they could make him pay even if they wanted to. All that was left was to move on begrudgingly. Let's go, we can't stay here any longer. Li Xiaoun said. He then led the group to leave the place. Just as they were about to leave, two figures appeared before them. It's them. Scarface looked at the two approaching figures and said, those are the people I was talking about, the ones that took the damaged sage weapon. At that, his eyes immediately turned cold. Since we couldn't get anything from the Lu Kingdom's treasure, we can't let this damaged sage weapon go. Perhaps if Scarface was alone, he would have thought twice before striking. However, with Li Xiaoun and others present, Scarface did not hold back any further. Boom. By stamping both his feet, Scarface launched himself like a cannonball and flew towards Chu Quan Gren and his companion. Little brat, you're dead. Scarface unleashed his sword and locked his deist rhymes on Chu Quan Gren. Chu Quan Gren merely took a sweeping glance and gently lifted his hands. A burst of deist rhymes that were multifold stronger than that of Scarface's was abruptly unleashed, manifesting into a godly mountain and crushing down onto his opponent. With a loud bang, Scarface was immediately reduced to a pile of blood mist. The remaining fighters who initially intended to join in the fight were immediately stunned. What was that? What just happened? Hiss. When they finally recovered to their senses, the group gasped in terror. After all, Scarface was considered the strongest amongst them. Even though he was not an honorable, he was close to one. Yet, he was shattered with a single palm technique. How strong was their opponent? Arm your weapons. Li Xianyun commanded. 
the rest then brandished their weapons. Deep down, their nerves were almost wrecking their souls. Just how many things did they have to go through within the short span of a day? First was getting ambushed by a group of tormented swordsmen, and when they had finally found the ancient Lu Kingdom, there was no treasure to be found, only to nearly lose their lives to the tormented army. Now, they found themselves in another difficult situation. Oh my! Did they not pray enough before they started this journey? Li Xiaoun could only gulp in fear as his heart trembled intensely upon the sight of an approaching Chu Quan Gren. Danger! An incredible danger! The person before Li Xiaoun was definitely the greatest foe he had ever crossed paths with. Looks like you people are an unfriendly bunch. Chu Quan Gren said calmly. Chu Quan Gren had initially planned to inquire about what happened here before Scarface came for his life without offering him a chance to speak. He had no choice but to obliterate the threat. Now that the situation had reached that point, it was inevitably a tad awkward for them to have a normal conversation. Looks like I have to make sure all of you are under control before I can speak any further. Chu Quan Gren then gripped his descendant self sword on his waist. The blade shook slightly. Then, an indescribable burst of sword-based deist rhyme exploded from Chu Kuang Gren's body, gushing out like a thunderous waterfall. The sword-based deist rhyme fell onto Xiao Yun troop and immediately sent them quivering in fear as they experienced the most terrifying moments of their lives. Aside from Li Xiaoun, most of his troop members were pressed to the ground as if they now had to bear the weight of an enormous mountain. Even Li Xiaoun himself could feel both his feet trembling under the pressure. In just a few breaths, his clothes were now soaked wet by his cold sweats. Such deist rhymes. You. You're Chu Quan Gren. Li Xiaoun said in a shaky voice. It was the same deist rhyme as the one he sensed from the wordings back in the Lu Kingdom's treasury. There was no doubt that the person before him was the one who left the words in the treasury. He was also none other than the renowned Chu Quan Gren. Oh, now that you've recognized me, Chu Quan Gren proceeded to remove his spiritual veil, no longer concealing the extraordinary feature on his face. Upon the sight of his face, Li Xiaoun and the rest no longer had any doubts in their mind. It was said that Chu Kuang Gren's appearance was peerless. Did that statement not perfectly describe the person before them? No wonder he could destroy Old Seven in a single attack because he's none other than Chu Kuang Gren. How did we end up offending a person of such stature? Hold on, if Chu Kuang Gren's here and his parting words were still in the treasury, does that mean he had only discovered the treasure recently as well? Damn it, looks like we really ran out of luck. The troop members conversed while they lay flat on the ground. Although Li Xiaoun could still stand under such pressure, he had exhausted all of his strength in doing so. There was no way he could engage in a battle with Chu Quan Gren. How could we have such a huge gap between our abilities? Li Xiaoun was a supreme honorable and was ranked 10th in the Hundred Swords spectrum. He could even put on a great fight with Murong Feng, who ranked 2nd. However, he now found himself struggling to draw his swords before the first ranking swordsman of the Hundred Swords spectrum. Tell me, what happened here? Chu Quan Gren said calmly as he came before Li Xiaoun. In face of Chu Quan Gren's question, Li Xiaoun did not dare hide any secrets and proceeded to explain all that had happened, including how they came to find the ancient kingdom and how Shang Han released the tormented souls. Shang Han? The name sounds familiar. Chu Quan Gren seemed puzzled as he felt the name rang a bell. Master, he's the young emperor of the Shang clan. Four years ago, you once defeated him in the royal Azure dynasty's palace, Lan Yu reminded him from the side. Only then did Chu Quan Gren remember. So it's him. If you didn't mention it, I would have completely forgotten having fought this person before. He was so weak that I didn't even think he was worth remembering. Chu Quan Gren lamented while he shook his head. Li Xiaoun and the rest had an incredulous look on their faces. Was Shang Han weak? Not at all. As a young emperor, his combat strength could even surpass some honorables. Despite that, he was perceived to be unworthy of even being remembered to Chu Quan Gren. If Shang Han knew about this, one could only wonder how he would react. His biggest nemesis did not even bother to remember his name. Was this the ultimate power move? Let's head to Sun Soil City. Looks like we have no choice but to postpone exploring the core area for now, Chu Quan Gren murmured while he looked into the distance. Chu Quan Gren's figure flashed as he sped towards Sun Soil City with Lan Yu. Upon his departure, the sword-based deist rhymes that shrouded the troop members slowly dissipated. When their bodies were freed from the pressure, the members felt as if their bodies were reborn as they quickly gasped for air. So that's Chu Quan Gren? How terrifying! Indeed. We couldn't even resist at all before him. So powerful, so terrifying. Chapter 238, The Horizon Wing Sect Cultivators Do Not Fear Death, Monk Disciple Wu Yat. In Sun Soil City. Many adventurers had swiftly abandoned the city to flee from the danger. They had witnessed the approach of the large black mass charging from afar a terrifying army comprising of countless tormented souls. Its skyrocketing ferocious chi and rage chi could strike fear into anyone who had the misfortune of witnessing it. 
wherever the Grand Army passed through, even other tormented souls would be easily torn apart, destroyed, and consumed. No one could stop its advance. The crowd too saw from afar that some honorable adventurers were swept in by the tormented army. All it took were a dozen breaths and they were torn into pieces. The sight was a terrible one to behold. The tormented army only operated on one principle. To kill everything on sight. How terrifying. It looks like today marks the final day of Sunsoil City. Even the remarkable combat troops of Sunsoil City could only resort to fleeing for their lives in the face of the advancing tormented army. However, amid the chaos, there was a group of fighters that went against the flow. Just when most were frantically fleeing away from Sunsoil City, these individuals were charging directly towards Sunsoil City from a distance instead. Every one of them had determination written all over their faces. Those are, the cultivators of Horizon Wing Sect. What are they doing, coming to Sunsoil City at such timing? Many were puzzled. Some lamented the situation too. The Horizon Wing Sect's territories lie just beyond this town and its home to millions of civilians. Once Sunsoil City is gone, these civilians will most likely be the next victims. They're here to defend against the tormented army. Upon hearing that explanation, a few other cultivators could only gaze in admiration. However, there were also some who made dissing remarks. Pfft, do they think they can stop the tormented army with only such little manpower? They don't care about their lives anymore. Indeed, this army is massive. I bet not even ten Horizon Wing sects worth of manpower could pull this off. They're literally marching towards their deaths. In Sunsoil City, Leng Chong Kong had just returned to the city when he saw the tormented army charging with an inordinate amount of rage chi. He then immediately thought of the countless civilians under the care of Horizon Wing sect and knew that his own sect would not stand aside and watch the event unfold. Indeed. It was not long before he received a telepathic message from the Horizon Wing sect. Old Zhang, you should go and bring the rest to safety. Leng Chong Kong said to Old Zhang, a member of the Horizon Wing troop. Besides the Horizon Wing sect members, there were some troop members in Old Zhang's team that were not part of the sect who need not stay on and fight the incoming army. Leader, what are you talking about? I don't know about the rest, but I, Old Zhang, will never abandon my duties. We've agreed to live and die together, said Old Zhang. That's right, we'll never leave. Aren't they just tormented souls anyway? We've gotten used to them. The Horizon Wing troop members had endured countless adversities together over the years. None of them intended to leave their duties. At that moment, Leng Chong Kong suddenly felt that his greatest achievement in life was not that he became a deist, but that he had the fortune to serve alongside these brothers in arms. Then, as several streams of light flashed above their head, they knew that reinforcements from Horizon Wing sect had arrived. Let's go. Leng Chong Kong took a deep breath, his eyes burning with a raging determination. With that, he led the troop towards the wall of Sunsoil City. Within the city, a young monk was walking against the direction of the escaping crowd to the city's wall. He was dressed in a cloth gown and was holding a Buddhist's cane in his hand. Others were shocked to witness his behavior. This monk's walking towards the city gate, he doesn't care about his life anymore. Is he not afraid of the tormented soul? Why do you care so much? Let's hurry up and leave. The young monk had heard all the remarks people had towards him, yet he still maintained his tranquil expression. Looking afar at the charging tormented souls, he murmured, Amitabha, if I don't walk into hell, who else would? He continued his march towards the city's front gate with no hesitation. Just then, the young monk saw several cultivators from the Horizon Wing sect charging towards the tormented army from above, and he let out a smile. I'm not alone in this journey. On the city wall of Sunsoil City, the Horizon Wing sect master and several elders were staring solemnly at the approaching tormented army. The tormented army was more intimidating than they thought. Even from afar, they could already sense the immense oppressive aura that the army radiated. The disturbing rage chi had sent goosebumps all over their bodies. At that moment, Leng Chong Kong had also arrived. Greetings sect master and elders. Greetings. Since we're now on the battlefield, there's no need for formality. Noted. Leng Chong Kong then saw a young monk beside the Horizon Wing sect master and asked curiously, Who's this master? My name is Wu Yat. The young monk replied with a smile. This shocked Leng Chong Kong and others. Wu Yat, as in, the monk disciple of Thunder Temple. Wu Yat, the most stellar young individual in the way of Buddhist Dao and one of the 38 young emperors. Looks like he's here too. Wu Ye was amongst the more well-known cultivators among the younger generation. It was not a simple feat to become both a Buddhist disciple and a young emperor. Master Wu Ye was training in the ancient battlefield when the tormented army broke up. He was kind enough to lend his hands to us in this battle. The Horizon Wing sect master explained. I see. Leng Chong Kong's expression turned serious as he bowed gratefully towards Wu Ye. After that, the group soon began to discuss strategies to defeat the tormented army. The tormented army was now less than a hundred miles away from Sunsoil City. Judging by their speed, 
it would not take long before they eventually reached the city's border. The group was running out of time. I've been observing their movements for a while now. The individual strength of the tormented army is not strong at all, but the fact that their powers are all concentrated into a single battle formation, now this is the trickiest part. That's right. If we're able to disrupt that formation, the tormented souls will be dispersed and it'll be easier for us to handle them individually. How do we destroy their battle formation? Since it's a formation, there must be a commander amongst them. As long as we manage to remove this commander, we'll achieve our goal. But there's so many of them, how are we able to locate the commander? The group soon found themselves in a difficult conundrum. The monk disciple, Wu Ye, then smiled gently. Leave this to me. The group's attention fell on him while the Horizon Wing sect master immediately recalled, it's said that the Thunder Temple owns a renowned technique that's known as the All-Seeing Eye of God. When trained to its fullest, one can look into the various worlds and realms. Are you intending to use that to locate the commander, wise master? We can give it a try. Wu Ye nodded his head slightly. Following that, a golden light flashed in his eyes as he activated his all-seeing eye, immediately accessing his vision into the tormented army. Wu Ye was immediately greeted by a swarm of rage chi that trembled his body, and it was almost enough to blind his eyes. His face paled as he began to search for the commander in the tormented army. Finally, he set his focus on one tormented soul who was dressed in a suit of black armor. The rage chi that it emitted was so overwhelming that countless tormented souls were swarming around this entity as if to protect it. Looks like that's the commander of this tormented army. Monk disciple Wu Ye shared his findings with the Horizon Wing sect master and others. Next is to kill off this tormented army commander. Leave this to me. The Horizon Wing sect master smiled and retrieved a golden longbow, which was laced with an extraordinary deist rhyme. Then, he took out an arrow and pulled the longbow, locking the target onto the commander's position with Wu Ye's guidance. As he stretched the golden longbow to its fullest, the Horizon Wing sect master channeled his spiritual energies incessantly into the longbow. With a snap, the arrow pierced through the sky, transforming into a golden ray of light, and charged straight towards the tormented army commander. Chapter 239, Disrupting the Battle Formation with a Single Sword Chi, I can be sure who it is. Like a shooting star, the arrow was sent flying across the sky. When it penetrated the horde of tormented souls, it immediately went for the tormented army commander. Meanwhile, each tormented soul that the arrow passed through while on its way was immediately shattered into pieces. It did not seem long before the arrow had traveled almost a hundred miles and arrived before the tormented army commander. The group was almost overjoyed. We did it. Unfortunately, it was at that moment when the tormented army commander abruptly raised his right hand and caught the arrow in its path, sending a terrifying explosion of ferocious chi to its surrounding. The arrow vibrated madly in its hand before it was immediately crushed into smithereens. The Horizon Wing sect master was appalled at that sight. How's that possible? He was in disbelief. After all, although the golden longbow that he wielded was not a sage weapon, it could still be considered as one of the most stellar supreme weapons. Combining that with his supreme honorable cultivation base, even a supreme honorable would have a tough time defending against the attack. Yet, the tormented army commander had shattered the attack with great ease. What level of power was that? He must be one of the most powerful supreme honorables, perhaps very close to becoming a sage. The Horizon Wing sect master's expression was extremely grim. The rest were even mortified at what just happened. Roar. As if enraged by the ambush attempt, the tormented army commander let out a loud battle cry, and the tormented army now marched at an even quicker pace. It would only be a while before the group would clash with the army. Damn it, if we don't destroy their formation, this will be a tough battle. I'm afraid our strengths won't be enough to last long on this battlefield. Whatever comes, we must fight this battle. The Horizon Wing sect master took a deep breath and looked more determined than ever. Damn, I don't believe this. An elder came rushing out, his hand wielding a long spear that was surrounded by a powerful encasing of deist rhymes. As he launched his spear forward, the deist rhymes exploded and went right for the tormented army. The spear was intended to kill the tormented army commander, but it did not even get close to it before other tormented souls blocked off the attack. Curse it! Horizon Sword Chi! Another elder withdrew his sword. Wu Ye took a deep breath too as he twisted his fingers into a mysterious stamp, sending forward a bright golden Buddhist light that was imbued with mighty power. Both the sword attack and the Buddhist light attack were aimed directly at the tormented army commander. Alas, just like the previous attempt, it was futile. After another ambush attempt, the surrounding tormented souls had become even more populous in number. It was now more difficult to reach the tormented army general. Arg! Leng Chong Kong was furious. He proceeded to lash out countless rounds of sword chi towards the tormented army. However, if an expert like Wu Ye and the Horizon Wings sect master could not do it, what more for a paradise realm cultivator like him? Like dropping a pin into the ocean, Leng Chong Kong's sword chi did not provoke any reaction at all. The Horizon Wing sect master sighed and said, Leng Chong Kong, 
save your spiritual power. You should prepare for the oncoming battle. Leng Chong Kong nodded reluctantly. All of a sudden, Leng Chong Kong thought of something. He once again awakened his spiritual power and channeled it into a long sword in his hands. The Horizon Wing Sect Master frowned at the sight of this. Why can't this kid take any instructions? Just when the Sect Master was about to retort his actions, devastating sword based Daoist rhymes immediately exploded from Lang Chang Kong's long sword. The sword based Daoist rhyme was so powerful that it shook the entire city wall. The rest of the group stared dumbfoundedly in Lang Chang Kong's direction. What a devastating aura! How is it possible for him to have such formidable abilities? I don't think this is his doing, it's his sword. What's going on? Leng Chong Kong's sword was now radiating with a bright purple glow, and an eye-catching sword ray circulated at its tip as if it was ready to be released at any moment. Leng Chong Kong himself was stunned. Before returning to Sun Soil City, Chu Quan Gren had imbued Leng Chong Kong's sword with his sword chi so that he could ward off any difficult opponents. However, throughout Leng Chong Kong's journey back to Sun Soil City, they did not meet any danger at all and the sword chi was preserved until now. He had initially thought to just give this a try and held no high hopes. After all, even the Horizon Wing Sect Master and Wu Ye could not defeat the commander. What use could a single strand of sword chi from Chu Quan Gren be? He did not foresee this coming at all. That a single strand of sword chi could hold such immense power. The endless stream of energies that was radiating from the sword sent a numbing sensation down his spine. Such devastating power was something Leng Chong Kong had never witnessed before. Yet now, this very source of power was within the grasp of his hands. At that moment, the power fueled Leng Chong Kong's ambition and he involuntarily lifted his sword handle high, aiming his attack towards the tormented army commander. He then took a firm step forward and unleashed the entire weight of the sword's power before him. Strike! With a loud battle cry, he struck his sword downwards. A blinding burst of purple sword ray gushed out like a thunderous waterfall and mercilessly tore into the horde of tormented souls. Wherever the sword chi passed by, countless tormented souls were reduced into dust. As if sensing an unprecedented threat, the tormented army commander let out a long wail, channeling all his terrifying ferocious chi into the form of a bloodthirsty skull to use it against the oncoming sword ray. The moment the two attacks collided, the skull was instantly cracked open. The remaining sword ray landed flawlessly on the tormented army commander. With a loud wail, the tormented army commander disintegrated under the sword ray. Without their commander, the remaining tormented souls began to scatter frantically. On the city wall of Sun Soil City, Everyone was staring dumbfoundedly at Leng Chong Kong as they struggled to comprehend the attack he just unleashed. Was the untouchable commander annihilated just like that? By a Paradise Realm cultivator's single strand of sword chi. Leng Chong Kong now had all eyes on him. However, Wu Ye and the Horizon Wing Sect Master knew that this sword attack was something Leng Chong Kong could never pull off alone. He must have relied on someone else to display that attack. Leng Chong Kong's sword suddenly let out a shattering sound, and cracks appeared along his blade before the sword broke into pieces and fell onto the ground. Leng Chong Kong took a deep breath in. Although his sword was a supreme weapon, it could not withstand the sheer weight of the sword key power. Leng Chong Kong, what's going on here? The Horizon Wing Sect Master asked hastily. This strand of sword chi was gifted to me by a fellow Daoist from Black Heaven Sect. He saved my life two days ago and I showed him around the ancient battlefield. Before we parted ways, he imbued my sword with this strand of sword chi. Leng Chong Kong summarized the story to the Sect Master. Black Heaven Sect? Who exactly in Black Heave sect? He covered his face with a spiritual veil, so it was difficult to see. But he did say his surname was Chu, Leng Chong Kong answered. A surname of Chu. Chu. Could it be? As if the Horizon Wing sect master had recalled something, his eyes widened. A person from Black Heaven sect who possessed this amount of power and had a surname of Chu. All these could only lead to a single person. Was there a silver-haired lady beside him? Wu Ye asked. That's right. I think the lady's surname was Lan. Then I can be sure who it is. Wu Ye and the Horizon Wing Sect Master crossed looks as they both were shocked at the revelation. The duo ended up saying the name in unison. Chu Quan Gren. The mention of his name startled everyone else. Meanwhile, Leng Chong Kong was completely stunned. What? Brother Chu was none other than the renowned Chu Quan Gren. Looking back at his interaction with Chu Quan Gren, Leng Chong Kong now saw how it made perfect sense. However, it still did not prevent the shock he felt. After all, that person was Chu Quan Gren. If one were to ask whose name was the most attention-grabbing in the whole world, without a doubt, the answer would be Chu Quan Gren. It was impossible for anyone to be unfamiliar with his name. Chapter 240, Died for Nothing, Chu Quan Gren is here, destroying tens of thousands of tormented souls in a single slash. Who would have thought that Chu Quan Gren is in Sun Soil City? If he's here, perhaps we stand a chance in defeating this tormented army. The Horizon Wing Sect Master's eyes lit up as he said. After all, 
Chu Kuanggren's reputation had far preceded him. For an individual to have such widespread popularity, there was little doubt of Chu Kuanggren's abilities. If he was to assist the group in battle, their jobs would be much easier. Sect Master, I'm afraid Chu Kuanggren's now probably deep in the ancient battlefield. He even said he would explore the core area, so it's likely that he won't be here in time, said Leng Chong Kong helplessly. The Horizon Wing Sect Master's mood changed for the worse. He sighed and said, looks like we can only blame fate then. What was once a hopeful scenario was now gone. When the group was still conversing with each other, the tormented army did not slow down at all despite losing their commander, and although their formation had been disrupted, the army's rage chi had still maintained its terrifying presence. Countless tormented souls came charging while their rage manifested as an enormous cloud of black mist that covered the entire horizon. All of a sudden, Sun Soil City had turned dark under their presence. When the tormented army arrived about ten miles away from Sun Soil City, its oppressive rage chi had already imposed an unsettling presence on every cultivator. Among the group, a disciple of the Horizon Wing sect was wielding a longsword, his face was pale and his forehead was covered with sweat. It was evident that his hand was already shaking. When the tormented army finally arrived before them, every cultivator could see their terrorizing grimaces. Charge! One of the leading disciples screamed and was the first to charge into battle. Behind him, several other disciples followed suit and let out a similar battle roar for an extra dose of courage. Charge! The expert cultivators such as the Horizon Wing sect master had also joined in the battle. Deist rhymes erupted as they unleashed their spiritual powers onto the tormented army. Without their battle formation, the tormented souls could no longer concentrate their powers, so it was now all tormented souls for their own. As a result, their combat abilities had vastly reduced. Nonetheless, one should still not underestimate the might of millions of tormented souls. The moment the two forces collided, Horizon Wing sect members suffered casualties, and the rate of the casualties increased rapidly at that too. Comparing their numbers, the cultivators of Horizon Wing sect were drastically outnumbered. Yet everyone refused to retreat. If they did, their homes which they had just left would be turned into a living hell. Millions of citizens would perish. Kill. You bunch of despicable spirits, come on. The cultivators of Horizon Wing sect roared as they brandished their weapons, channeling all the spiritual energies that they could muster to protect their homeland. Some escaping cultivators stopped upon witnessing the scene. It was a sight that weighed heavily on them. They did not understand why the cultivators of Horizon Wing sect would abandon their lives in a losing battle. If they died, the countless civilians they had sworn to protect would still perish anyway. It was as if their deaths were worthless. Shit, I feel like a useless weakling. Same. Damn it, aren't those just tormented souls? Let's head back and fight them. The mighty dragon troop shall not resort to becoming a bunch of deserters. Head back. Some cultivators were inspired by the determination of Horizon Wing sect. They felt a deep-rooted passion burning in them as they held tight and turned back towards Sun Soil City. Of course, some could not avoid making some dissing remarks. Humph, they'll end up dying soon. Indeed, the tormented army is way too strong for these few people to make a difference. They'll just die for nothing. In Sun Soil City, the cultivators of Horizon Wing sect were battling furiously with the tormented army. In a short span of time, they had lost one-third of their cultivators. It was likely that the reinforcements from other cultivators would barely make a difference. The Horizon Wing sect master's heart ached upon witnessing these casualties. It's still tough to defend the millions of tormented souls even after we've broken their battle formation. Is this all we can do? The gods are acting unfairly. How could they just stand and watch innocent people suffer just like that? He let out a long battle roar, wielded his sword, and continued to fight. In the battle, Wu Ye twisted his hands and channeled his spiritual energies before Buddhist lights radiated around him. Each Buddhist lights that he conjured would then kill one tormented soul. His abilities were powerful and it inflicted great damage to the tormented souls. However, he alone could not fight against millions of tormented souls no matter how powerful his Buddhist lights were. It was akin to putting out a forest fire with a cup of water. Leng Chong Kong drew a new pair of swords and fought the tormented souls while other troop members fought alongside him. The tormented souls kept coming like an endless stream of water. It was not long before everyone was at their limits. Just when the troop was about to be completely annihilated, a loud explosion was heard across the horizon. It was as if something massive were to crash onto the ground. A stream of light landed right in front of Leng Chong Kong and the troop. A rigorous sword-based deist rhyme abruptly erupted, reducing all tormented souls in a few hundred feet radius into ashes. Only then could Leng Chong Kong and the rest see that the object landing before them was a delicately forged longsword. The Horizon Wing sect master, Ye Wu, and the other cultivators were immediately overjoyed. They did not recognize the sword. However, they could sense that the burst of sword-based deist rhyme was familiar because it was the same sword chi that was previously imbued onto Lang Chang Kong's sword. He's here. It's him, he's finally here. 
Wu Ye and the Horizon Wing sect master murmured, their eyes glimmering with hope. Just then, a figure dressed in elegant white clothes descended from the sky. He landed on the sword handle with his robe fluttering in the wind. Then, like a devastating typhoon, a thunderous burst of sword chi erupted from his body, sending destructions into all directions. All tormented souls who came in contact with the sword chi shockwave were immediately reduced to smokes. At that moment, everyone was distracted by the white-robed individual. As their sight fell onto him, they were all in awe. Even the tormented souls were momentarily shocked by the aura that this individual exhibited. The person was none other than Chu Quan Gren. At the same time, a blinding white light shined across the sky. With her wings spread and dressed in silver-white armor, Lan Yu wielded the scepter of light and obliterated a significant amount of tormented souls by activating her holy radiant physique. Rays of light deist rhymes poured out of her body in the form of white lights, but it disintegrated any tormented soul who came in contact with the light rays. Young Emperor Lan Yu The crowd could recognize Lan Yu. It was said that young Emperor Lan Yu was inseparable from Chu Quan Gren. Wherever Chu Quan Gren went, she was sure to be there. Greetings, sect leader. I'm the Horizon Wing sect master. The Horizon Wing sect master shouted while he was battling the tormented souls. The Horizon Wing sect was an affiliated force to the Black Heaven sect. Since Chu Quan Gren was the Black Heaven sect leader, he was by extension also the Horizon Wing sect leader. Chu Quan Gren took a quick glance at his surroundings. He realized that most of them were members of the Horizon Wing sect. Chu Quan Gren inhaled deeply as he could more or less deduce what happened. Everyone, I'm late. He peered upon the horde of tormented souls as his eyes reflected a cold glint. The sword-based deist rhyme that he radiated was now even more domineering. As if the tormented souls sensed the threat that Chu Quan Gren posed to, they let out a roar and charged towards him in unison. The self-descendant sword below Chu Quan Gren jerked slightly before it levitated into the air. When it fell in his hands, all Chu Quan Gren did was wave it gently. A wave of purple sword rays burst out like an enormous ripple, destroying any tormented souls that it touched with ease. That one slash alone annihilated tens of thousands of tormented souls. It was a jaw-dropping scene for the group. Despite battling for so long and losing countless casualties, their combined contributions could not even rival that of a single sword slash from Chu Quan Gren. Is this how a person who's capable of killing a sage looks like? The Horizon Wing sect master murmured. Chapter 241, The Tathagata Rebirth Mantra one sword strike killed tens of thousands of tormented souls. The combat strength that Chu Quan Gren displayed shocked everyone at the scene. Meanwhile, the tormented souls had also sensed that Chu Quan Gren was not a person to mess with as they stopped targeting him and went for the others instead. The battle waged on. However, Chu Quan Gren frowned slightly. Although he was not afraid of the one million tormented souls, it was still quite challenging for him to wipe them all out. Even if his one sword strike had killed tens of thousands of them, he still had to repeat that dozens of times. Besides, these tormented souls would not gather together for him to kill them as well. By the time he was done wiping out all of the tormented souls, most of the people from the Horizon Wing sect would be dead, and that was something he did not want to witness. Since I'm here, there shall be no further casualties. As for the one million tormented souls, I wonder if you guys can fend off my Buddhist light. A bright golden light lit up in Chu Kuang Gren's eyes. He sheathed the descendant self-sword and sat with his legs crossed in the air. An extremely mysterious surge of deist rhyme suddenly spread. Upon sensing it, a look of uncertainty flashed across the nearby Wu Yi's face. This is. Surges of deist rhyme emanated from Chu Kuang Gren's body. The brilliant golden light that radiated from his body carried a vast, bright and compassionate Buddhist intent. Tathagata Rebirth Mantra A look of compassion appeared on Chu Kuang Gren's face as the brilliant Buddhist light on his body was at its most intense and it spread outwards like a raging tide. When the tormented souls were enveloped by the Buddhist light, they screamed one after another during which the ferocious chi on their bodies dispelled like snow melting under the sun. That was the legendary technique that was obtained from the fantasy roulette the Tathagata Rebirth Mantra. That scene before him shocked him so much that his eyes were white and his mouth agape. Buddhist Light Why is there Buddhist light on his body? The Buddhist light was a trait unique only to Buddhist cultivators and could never be found in ordinary cultivators. Isn't Chu Quan Gren a sword cultivator? Why does he have the Buddhist light? And of this scale as well. By the heavens. Even the abbot can't hope to compare with that I'm afraid, Wu Ye exclaimed with shock. If his Buddhist light was a small stream, then the amount that Chu Quan Gren was releasing would be akin to a vast ocean. Both of them could not be compared. However, something that turned Wu Ye's worldview upside down happened next. The endless Buddhist light that Chu Quan Gren manifested was gradually forming an ancient golden Buddha statue on his head. The golden Buddha was thousands of feet high and had his palms together as a thousand feet high Buddhist light erupted from his body, tearing through the ferocious chi formed clouds. This. How's this possible? Wu Ye was so dazed, he did not dare believe what he was witnessing. By the heavens, did he just meet the Buddha in real life? 
the Golden Buddha had manifested in the heavens and earth by spreading its Golden Buddhist light everywhere like a surging sea. The Buddha's lips were also opened like it was chanting. In an instant, golden lotuses surged from the ground while mysterious Brahmic chimes echoed through the sky, filling everyone's inner selves with peace as if it had purified their hearts. Meanwhile, the one million tormented souls shrieked non-stop. The combination of Brahmic chimes and Buddhist light was breaking down their rage and ferocious chi to erase the roots of their existence. Could he be a living Buddha? Wu Ye uttered as he looked at the compassionate Chu Quan Gren, who was sitting above in the void, in a daze. He was not the only one. That gigantic Buddha could be seen from thousands of miles away. Numerous people knelt on the ground and prayed when they saw it. A surge of Buddhist deist rhyme spread to all directions, which made all the strong cultivators on Firmament Star sense it. This surge of deist rhyme feels pure and peaceful. It's, the Buddha? And it contains an emperor's aura as well. Has an emperor appeared among the Buddhists? Did someone among the Buddhists become a Buddhist emperor? That's impossible. The emperors have disappeared for such a long time, and since the era of great battles has just started, how can something like that happen so soon? This direction. It's coming from the ancient battlefield. The sages were startled. One by one, they immediately activated spiritual thoughts towards the ancient battlefield's direction. When they saw the giant Buddha that was emanating a sense of tranquil antiquity lying in the void, they were all shocked. If that giant Buddha was not a statue, they would have suspected that they were seeing the real Buddha instead. That was too shocking for them. However, they were even more dumbfounded when they looked below the giant Buddha statue and saw the same Buddhist light radiating from a cross-legged Chu Quan Gren. What's going on? Isn't that Chu Quan Gren? This giant Buddha statue was formed by the Buddhist light from his body. My God, he was the one who made this giant statue. Wait, isn't Chu Quan Gren a sword cultivator from Black Heaven sect? When did he get involved with the Buddhists instead? I doubt even the virtuous eminent monks from Thunder Temple would have Buddhist light as dense as the one from his body. How the hell does he do it? Buddhist cultivator? The sages were starting to think that this joke was going too far. Chu Quan Gren had killed sages and young emperors, turning everywhere he went upside down. How could he have the slightest hint of Buddha's compassion? However, the facts were right before them. The Buddhist light from Chu Quan Gren's body was not fake. Sigh, I knew it. Whenever this Chu Quan Gren descends into the world, trouble will always follow wherever he goes. And as expected, something happened in just a few days. One of the sage could not help but lament. The other sages agreed as well. So what, do you have any objections? Do take a closer look. This young lad is purifying the tormented souls and saving the lives of innocents. This is such a merit accumulating thing to do. But why do you guys have to twist the narrative like he's causing trouble instead? At that moment, the Black Heaven Sex Sage spoke through his spiritual thoughts. Only then did the other sages notice the million tormented souls. Geez, the Buddhist light is so bright that I didn't even notice these tormented souls. Where did all of them come from? Judging by the looks of it, Chu Quan Gren is almost done settling that. The crowd of sages continued to observe. The vast Buddhist light purified the one million tormented souls and dissipated the rage and ferocious chi on their bodies. With that, their terrifying appearance gradually turned into a peaceful one. All of them bowed to Chu Quan Gren as if they were thanking him for releasing them from their endless suffering. Everything eventually returns to where it came from. Rest in peace, everyone. With a compassionate look on his handsome face, Chu Quan Gren put his palms together and said to the numerous tormented souls. Then, the one million souls from the tormented army turned into spots of light and disappeared. Everyone was shocked by the scene before them. They looked towards Chu Quan Gren with respect in their eyes. At that moment, everyone would no doubt believe Chu Quan Gren if he told them that he was a living Buddha. After purifying the tormented souls, Chu Quan Gren lowered his hands and retracted the endless Buddhist light back into his body. His expression eventually returned to normal. However, once the tormented souls had dissipated, a strange black chi suddenly appeared in the void. The aura of the black chi was incredibly similar to the ferocious chi, but it was much purer by comparison and it had not disappeared despite the Buddhist light's purification. This thing seems a bit strange. Chu Quan Gren then reached his hand outward to form a larger hand with his spiritual energy and grabbed it. He thoroughly studied it for a while. Suddenly, he recalled what the Lu Kingdom's ruler told him. This tormented army was formed because the Tranquil Kingdom's ruler stole a source of ferocious chi from the Forbidden Area. Could this be the source of the ferocious chi? Chu Quan Gren pondered for a while before he placed it into a box and kept it inside his yin and yang ring. He then looked at the cultivators around him, and a mysterious surge of deist rhyme emanated from his body as if a spring breeze was brushing past everyone. Everyone instantly felt that their exhaustion was swept away and their injuries had rapidly recovered as well. They were so amazed, and once again, they could not help but be impressed by Chu Quan Gren's tactics. Chapter 242, Provide Guidance, Six Words, He's Undoubtedly Our Sect Leader. 
everyone healed quickly under the effects of the spring breeze healing technique. Chu Quang Gren was about to come down to the ground after he cast that technique in midair. However, he had a sudden hunch that made him look towards the ancient battlefield. His gaze crossed the sea of clouds and fell onto a white-robed figure that was standing on the ancient battlefield sand dune. The white-robed figure was holding a spear. His face was covered with a hideous-looking mask while his deep dark eyes looked at Chu Quang Gren. The white-robed general. Chu Quang Gren frowned slightly as he wondered why he was seeing that person again. Following that, he saw the white-robed general struck his spear on the ground and bowed towards him. It seemed like he was either thanking Chu Quang Gren or paying his respects to the million now departed tormented souls. Chu Quang Gren was stunned. What is he doing now? Just when Chu Quang Gren wanted to ask him some questions, the white-robed general lifted the spear before his figure disappeared in the sandstorm. Is he related to the million unit tormented army? Wait, could he be a citizen of the tranquil kingdom? Chu Quang Gren thought. Since the million unit tormented army was transformed from the tranquil kingdom's troops, could it be that the white-robed general was a general from the tranquil kingdom? Otherwise, why would he express his gratitude to Chu Quang Gren for purifying these one million tormented souls? The more Chu Quang Gren thought about it, the more he felt that it might be possible. However, there might be some other hidden reasons that he did not know of too. Hence, without thinking any further, he retracted his spiritual power and returned to the ground. The Horizon Wing Sect Master, Wu Yat, Lang Chong Kong, and others went up to him. Greetings, Sect Leader. I'm the Horizon Wing Sect Master. Greetings, Brother Chu. My name is Wu Yat. One by one, the few of them greeted and bowed to him. Chu Quang Gren chuckled. It's all right, there's no need for pleasantries. After that, he looked at Lang Chong Kong who then looked back at him with a bitter smile and said, Brother Chu, you've taken great lengths to hide your identity from me. Chong Kong, don't be rude. The Horizon Wing Sect Master scolded from the side. Lang Chong Kong had come back to his senses too by then. Since his own Sect Master had addressed Chu Quang Gren as Sect Leader, it would be impolite for him to address the other party as a fellow deist. His expression turned serious. Greetings, Sect Leader. I'm Chong Kong. It's all right, Brother Ling. You can drop the formalities, Chu Quang Gren replied. The few of them then went to clean up the battlefield. The Horizon Wing Sect Master could not hide the sadness in his eyes when he saw the Horizon Wing Sect's cultivators who had died in battle. They were all my Horizon Wing Sect's remarkable children. Please allow me to send them off with a prayer. Wu Ye sighed and sat on the ground. A faint Buddhist light emanated from his body as he started to recite the Buddhist scriptures. A wave of sanctity and harmonious qi emanated everywhere. Once the battlefield was cleaned up, Wu Ye went to seek out Chu Quang Gren. His eyes were bursting with great interest. Brother Chu, are you a Buddhist cultivator? Venerable monk, you must be joking. I'm the Black Heaven sect leader, so how can I possibly be a Buddhist cultivator? Chu Quang Gren shook his head and laughed. That's impossible. Wu Ye shook his head firmly. If you're not a Buddhist cultivator, then how do you have that kind of Buddhist light? I believe that even myself and the Thunder Temple's abbot pale in comparison to that Buddhist light. That's just a type of technique, so it can't really prove or explain anything. No Buddhist technique will be able to exert much or even its full power without the support of Buddhism. Since Brother Chu was bathed in Buddhist light just now, it means that you possess a deep understanding of that Buddhist technique. For this very reason, I believe Brother Chu's attainments in Buddhism should be at the top, Wu Ye said confidently. Based on that argument, Chu Quang Gren was no doubt a Buddhist cultivator. He was a little speechless. He had obtained the Tathagata Rebirth scripture through the fantasy roulette, so he never had to learn about Buddhism. After all, the knowledge and insights were directly imprinted into his mind upon retrieving that technique. However, he did not bother to explain that in detail. Meanwhile, seeing how silent Chu Quang Gren was made Wu Ye more certain that he was a Buddhist cultivator who possessed a vast amount of Buddhist knowledge. A hint of respect flashed across his eyes as he said, Brother Chu, I've traveled to the ancient battlefield because the concentration of rage qi is the densest here. I wanted to release these tormented souls while taking the opportunity to gain a deeper insight into Buddhism by doing so. I've been stuck in a bottleneck for many years now, I hope Brother Chu can provide me with some guidance. Chu Quang Gren was dumbfounded. Provide guidance? What kind of guidance could he possibly provide? His only understanding of Buddhism was limited to some famous proverbs, novels and plays from his past lives. You're too polite, venerable monk. My understanding of Buddhism is very shallow, so I'm not worthy to even speak of it at all. I'm afraid you've found the wrong person. There's no need to be humble, Brother Chu. Please do provide me with your guidance. Wu Ye looked at Chu Quang Gren excitedly. He was too eager to break through his current state. As a dignified monk disciple and also the leader of the younger generation of Buddhist practitioners, Wu Ye had been known as the most intelligent figure in the Thunder Temple for thousands of years. However, 
no one knew that his Buddhist attainments had reached a bottleneck and the fact that he could not make any progress troubled him a lot. He had been trying to find a way to break through his bottleneck in Buddhism for all these years. He had gone through all of Thunder Temple's Buddhist scriptures so many times that he could almost recite all of them by heart. Despite that, it only had a little effect on him, and he still could not break through his bottleneck. It was only when he saw Shu Kuang Gren's Buddhist light and the towering golden ancient Buddha statue just now did a flicker of hope ignite within his heart. He figured that person could perhaps solve his dilemma. Chu Kuang Gren had a slight headache when he saw how persistent Wu Ye was. Fine. I guess I'll try to make something up. He casually replied, see through, let go, be free. Those mere six words immediately unleashed the depths of Wu Ye's mind. See through. Let go. Be free. It may only be six words, but it contained most of Buddhism's essence. The mystery and wonders in those words were hard to comprehend even for a monk disciple like Wu Ye. However, he seemed to have grasped something amid that process. See through. Let go. Be free. Wu Yi's expression kept changing as he mumbled on. What should I see through? What should I let go of? How do I be free? The more Wu Ye tried to gain insight into those words, the crazier he gradually looked. Even the spiritual energy on his body was fluctuating subconsciously. That's not good, he's going to go mad. Next to him, the Horizon Wing sect master suddenly exclaimed. He could feel his head numbing. Those six words alone managed to make a monk disciple rack his brains and even show signs of going mad. It was extremely terrifying indeed. Why can't I feel anything at all then? A puzzled Lang Chong Kong asked. Although he heard the six words that Chu Quan Gren uttered as well, nothing happened to him. You're different from the monk disciple. Those six words contain countless essences of Buddhism. Since you're not well versed in Buddhism, it's natural for you not to understand the mystery within it. But the monk disciple has been reading Buddhist scriptures since young and has a very high cultivation level in Buddhism. That's why he ended up like this when he grasped the profound meaning within those six words. The Horizon Wing sect master explained in a serious tone. Lang Chong Kong was confused instead. To put it in another way, nothing happened to him because he understood too little. The Horizon Wing sect master looked at Chu Quan Gren sternly and said to him with his voice trembling, I can't believe the sect leader's attainments in Buddhism are so profound. Just the essences of Buddhism in those six words alone were enough to make even a monk disciple struggle. Is it that overwhelming? Your level of understanding is still insufficient, so, naturally, you can't comprehend anything. Lang Chang Kong's mouth twitched slightly. That's great. This is my first time being called stupid and I can't even refute it. Sect leader, I'm afraid that the monk disciple will go mad if this goes on. What should we do now? The Horizon Wing sect master asked anxiously. When he looked to the calmed face Chu Quan Gren beside him as if nothing had happened, an immense admiration towards him suddenly filled his heart. The sect leader is no doubt worthy of his role. He's so calm even in a situation like this. It appears that I still have much to learn. The Horizon Wing sect master secretly sighed and lamented. Chapter 243, Continue Making Things Up, The Monk Disciple Formally Takes a Teacher, Entering the Ancient Battlefield Once More. Damn. What's going on with the monk disciple? Going mad. What have I done to make the monk disciple go mad? Chu Quan Gren may appear very calm on the surface, but deep down, he brooded over the monk as he had a lot of questions. Did he not just say six words? How could it possibly make a monk disciple go mad? If he knew something like that would happen earlier, he would not have made things up on the fly. If something bad were to happen to this monk disciple, would Thunder Temple seek him out for payback? Chu Quan Gren kept on thinking about various measures to save the monk. Although he was not afraid of the Thunder Temple, he did contribute to Wu Yi's current situation. He could not possibly stand idly and watch without helping. Chu Quan Gren looked at Wu Ye and secretly gritted his teeth. I must continue making things up. Life is made by oneself, while appearances are made by the heart, hence everything in the world is simply an appearance. If the heart doesn't move, all things are immovable. If the heart doesn't change, nothing changes. A foolish thought is the end of wisdom, while a sensible thought is the birth of wisdom. All appearances are illusory. If one sees that all appearances are not, in fact, their true manifestations, then one shall see the Buddha. Chu Quan Gren no longer cared if those verses made sense. He simply continued to recite the Buddhist classics that he had read from his previous life. The Horizon Wing sect master was stunned speechless. From what he heard, every word that Chu Quan Gren uttered contained an extremely exquisite Buddhist doctrine. What level of enlightenment must one achieve in Buddhism to speak these words? Our sect leader can't possibly be the living reincarnation of the Buddha, right? Beside him, Lang Chong Kong looked at Wu Ye with pity in his eyes. It's over, it's all over. The six words that our sect leader said have already led Master Wu Ye to the brink of madness. Now that he's spoken even more words. Is Master Wu Ye going to blow up on the spot? The more Lang Chong Kong thought about it, the more he felt that it could happen. 
he then quietly gestured to the other disciples behind him, signaling them to step back. As the exquisite Buddhist verses came out from Chu Kuang Gren's mouth, Wu Yi's grim face gradually turned serene. His previously agitated spiritual energy had calmed down as well. Suddenly, a very strong Buddhist light radiated from his body and burst into the skies. He had gained a realization. One by one, the doubts that had troubled him for many years were now solved under Chu Kuang Gren's guidance, and the realm of his Buddhist cultivation had gone up a notch as well. Although he had only comprehended a small part of what Chu Kuang Gren said, it made him admire the latter even more. Please accept my respects, teacher. In the eyes of the public, Wu Ye then knelt before Chu Kuang Gren and kowtowed towards him. The sight of that shocked the cultivators around them beyond words. That was the Thunder Temple's monk disciple and also a young emperor among the younger generation, yet he was now prostrating willingly before Chu Kuang Gren. It was truly unbelievable. Please stand up. Chu Kuang Gren stood unmoved and accepted Wu Yi's respects, but he felt relieved at the same time too. Finally, everything's over. Wu Ye stood up and said, Teacher, please allow me to be your student. Your Buddhist cultivation is so high that it's unbelievable. Just a little bit of guidance from you was enough to answer my doubts, even if I only comprehended a small part of it. Your guidance has benefited me for the rest of my life, how can I repay such kindness you've given me? So from today onwards, I shall address you as my teacher. Master Wu Ye, you're too polite. Chu Quan Gren chuckled. The fact that Wu Ye wanted Chu Quan Gren to be his teacher did not mean that he truly acknowledged Chu Quan Gren as a true teacher but it was simply an honorific instead. He would not mind it as long as it did not affect him. With the release of the tormented army and cleaning up the battlefield done, Chu Quan Gren was considering whether he should enter the ancient battlefield's core area again. After some pondering, he decided to go ahead and take a look. However, because the ancient battlefield's core area was an extremely dangerous place, he decided to leave Lan Yu behind in Sun Soil City temporarily and went ahead to explore himself. On the ancient battlefield. Within the inner zone, Chu Kuangan had just passed by the ancient Lu Kingdom. After the tormented army had broken through their seal, the enchanted boundary had already dissipated, exposing the great ancient city under the Sunday. Chu Kuang Gren sighed softly as he looked at the dilapidated wall of the ancient kingdom. The Lu Kingdom was also a powerful sage orthodoxy back in the day as its foundation was even stronger than that of the likes of the royal Azure dynasty. Yet despite how strong it was, the great Lu Kingdom still could not escape the fate of destruction. This proved that nothing was ever lasting in this world. At that thought, Chu Kuang Gren's desire for strength grew stronger. He could only ensure the Black Heaven sect's survival by becoming stronger. By becoming an emperor. No, he wanted to surpass even the great emperors. Chu Kuang Gren's eyes then lit up with determination. Looking at the ancient city in front of him, he suddenly recalled something. I guess Shang Han took that boundary emperor weapon away, hey? That's interesting. I do wonder when he'll dare to seek me out after obtaining that Boundary Emperor weapon. He suddenly looked forward to their encounter upon thinking of that. He was unbeatable among the younger generation. If a few strong cultivators were to appear before him, he would gladly meet and take them on. He would treat it as a way of relief so that he would not be too bored all the time. At that moment, sounds of a fight suddenly came from the Lu Kingdom's palace. Chu Kuang Gren's figure turned into a stream of light and in the next instant, he was at the Lu Kingdom's palace. A group of cultivators was there fighting over something. Hand over the sage's bones. Otherwise, don't you think of leaving here alive, a sturdy-looking man yelled at another young man. The cultivators around were staring menacingly at the young man as well. The unyielding young man then replied coldly, You guys want this sage's bones? In your dreams. Humph, then death shall come to you. Everyone then rushed forward and attacked the young man. The overall cultivation base of that group was not weak, and even the weakest was a battle monarch. Meanwhile, the young man's combat strength was at the level of a late-stage honorable. However, there were at least three people there who had similar combat strength to him, so the young man was outnumbered and he soon fell into a disadvantage. When Chu Quan Gren arrived, that young man was already filled with bruises and injuries. Chu Quan Gren pondered upon overhearing their conversation. A sage's bones. If I'm not mistaken, that must be the Lu Kingdom ruler's remains. I can't believe that his body was left here. The Lu Kingdom's appearance naturally attracted many adventurers to it. After Chu Quan Gren had cleared out the Lu Kingdom's treasure and Shang Han took the Boundary Emperor weapon away, the most valuable thing there was naturally the Sage's Bone. That was what those people were fighting over as of now. Seeing that the young man was bruised and injured, Chu Quan Gren had no intentions to strike. After all, he did not know the young man. Incidents where cultivators killed each other to steal, loot and pillage were very common. After a while, the young man had his arm cut off by another cultivator who took off with that arm and the yin and yang ring on it. The sage's bones were kept within that yin and yang ring. Everyone immediately rushed to it. The sage's bones are mine. However, 
a surge of absorption force then landed on the broken arm. Chu Quan Gren simply reached out to grab it and took off that yin and yang ring. His spiritual thoughts could sense that the Lu Kingdom ruler's remains were indeed stored inside that ring. The surface of the remains radiated golden light and emanated faint surges of Daoist rhyme. That skeletal remains were much stronger than the remains of ordinary sages. Chu Quan Gren concluded that when the Lu Kingdom's ruler was alive, his cultivation base could be close to a great sage. It was extremely rare to find such a strong cultivator now as not all the sage orthodoxies on the firmament star had a great sage watching over them. This set of skeletal remains is no doubt extremely valuable. Chu Quang Gren's eyes lit up. Meanwhile, the cultivator's expression suddenly turned ugly when they saw Chu Quang Gren taking that yin and yang ring. Some of them did not even say a single word before they armed themselves with weapons and rushed up to him, wanting to kill him and steal his loot. Chapter 244, Stealing the Sage's Bones, Entering the Core Area, The Infallible Tormented Physique. Hand over the sage's bones. Asshole. How dare you snatch it right before our noses. Dozens of cultivators armed with weapons rushed to attack Chu Quang Gren. However, Chu Quan Gren merely stood where he was. The descendant self-sword on his waist trembled slightly before an incomparably razor-sharp surge of sword-based Daoist rhyme that was imbued with his spiritual power erupted and transformed into sword chi. Streaks of sword chi swept outward like a violent wind. Before the cultivators who had rushed forward could get within three feet of Chu Quan Gren, the sword chi had torn them all apart. The rest of the cultivators gasped at that sight. What terrifying strength! Who is this? What kind of person is he? Wait a minute! With that gorgeous ancient sword on his waist and his otherworldly aura, can that person be? Chu Quang Gren. At the mention of Chu Quang Gren's name, everyone present suddenly dared not act rashly anymore. Instead, they all stepped aside. Meanwhile, the yin and yang ring's previous owner that young cultivator whose arm was cut off during the fierce battle earlier approached Chu Quang Gren. Brother Chu, I will definitely pay you a visit to deliver my utmost thanks for helping me out. He then stretched out his hand. Chu Quang Gren frowned. What are you trying to do? Um, Brother Chu, aren't you going to return my yin and yang ring, that young man said in disbelief. This yin and yang ring is my prize from this battle, why should I return it to you? If Chu Quan Gren had not obtained that yin and yang ring earlier, that young man would undoubtedly be dead by now, yet the same young man still intended to take his yin and yang ring back from Chu Quan Gren who was quite amused at this. The sage's bones should remain in the hands of those who were strong enough. If that young man was strong enough, then it should not be a problem for him to take it. However, he only had ambition but lacks said strength. You. The young man's expression shifted as he retorted angrily, does the dignified Black Heaven sect leader intend to lower himself down to those thieves? What a load of nonsense. Chu Quan Gren shook his head and casually let out a palm attack. A violent surge of Daoist rhyme formed into an ancient godly mountain, and with a thud, it blasted the young man into a mist of blood. Everyone shuddered as they did not expect Chu Quan Gren to be that decisive. Is anyone else interested in the sage's bones? Chu Quang Gren's calm gaze swept across the crowd. The most powerful of these cultivators were merely honorables who were like puny ants before the sage killing Chu Quang Gren. Who among them would dare go against him? Since the sage's bones have found their way into Brother Chu's possession, we won't dare to snatch it away from you. We shall take our leave now. Haha, <laughs> I'm quite fortunate to have witnessed Brother Chu's might today. At least my trip here is worthwhile. As rumored, sect leader Chu does indeed possess a heavenly poise. I'm convinced that the sage's bones should belong to you. I suddenly remembered that there's something I need to sort out back home. I'll take my leave first. Wait, what? Are you going to give birth, dear? All right, I'll come back as soon as possible. While some of them complimented Chu Quan Gren, some also took out their communication compass and pretended to be talking to someone else. Eventually, they all left the scene. They would never dare to steal from Chu Quan Gren even if they were given the heart of ten lions. Chu Quan Gren then used his spiritual thoughts to scan the whole palace. Once he learned that there was nothing valuable left, he left the ancient city and headed towards the ancient battlefield's core area. Ancient battlefield, core area. That was an area where even a sage would be extremely fearful to be in. The concentration of ferocious chi here was ten times denser than the ancient battlefield's inner zone, and high-level tormented souls were everywhere. Even Chu Quan Gren felt slightly uncomfortable stepping foot into that area. Only when he channeled some spiritual energy did he manage to alleviate that feeling. He activated his treasure locating skill. With that, Chu Quan Gren began to search for some nearby treasures. Three hundred miles ahead lies a sage weapon. His eyes lit up as his figure turned into a stream of light. Soon, he arrived at the sand dune where the sage weapon was buried. Chu Quan Gren lifted his arm and unleashed a surge of spiritual chi. The sand dune was instantly blown open. From the explosion emerged a scarlet longsword. Although the sacred sword looked rusty, it was still laced with a faint streak of sharp sword chi, which was quite daunting to look at. 
Chu Quangren held that sacred sword and channeled his spiritual energy into it. Suddenly, the rust fell off the surface of the sacred sword, revealing the sword's shiny red body and two small words that were engraved on its blade. Bloody bead. The blood bead sacred sword. With a satisfied smile, Chu Quangren kept the sacred sword into his sacred emerald sword case to nurture it before he continued to explore the core area. This area was truly more dangerous than the inner zone and the outer zone, but there were many opportunities of fortune too. Within half a day, Chu Quangren had obtained two sage weapons and around seven or eight supreme weapons. This ancient battlefield is a natural treasury. Chu Quangren praised. Suddenly, a strange fluctuation came from within his yin and yang ring. He took out a wooden box hesitantly and opened it to see the source of ferocious qi, which was similar to a cloud of black qi, tumbling about actively. What's going on? Just when Chu Quangren started to be perplexed, he suddenly felt an extremely violent killing intent behind him. With a slight change of his expression, his sword unsheathed at his waist. He unleashed a sword ray behind him. The moment the sword ray collided with ferocious chi formed saber light, they both exploded in the void and sent horrifying shockwaves everywhere. Even Chu Quangren could not help but fall back dozens of feet. This surge of energy. It's a sage. He could sense a sage deist rhyme within the surge of ferocious chi. Not far away, a tormented soul, who had an unrecognizable face and whole body shrouded in black ferocious chi, was holding a black long saber as it stared at Chu Quangren. Kill, kill, give me the innate ferocious chi. As that tormented soul murmured, the ferocious chi on his body became increasingly intense. Then, it dashed towards Chu Quangren. With a swing of its long saber, it unleashed a pitch black saber light which almost covered all the light in the world, and a domineering deist rhyme locked onto Chu Quangren. Against a tormented soul that had the combat strength of a sage, Chu Quan Gren did not dare let his guard down. Hence, he struck out his descendant self sword and released a majestic purple sword ray. The collision of those two forces rumbled the void once again. Four Seasons Sword Formation Chu Quan Gren retrieved his sacred emerald sword case. One by one, numerous long swords flew out of the sword case and rapidly formed into the mysterious Four Seasons Sword Formation. Within the sword formation, the Four Seasons alternated while the power of every natural phenomenon erupted. Compared to the previous year, Chu Quang Gren's current cultivation base was at the late stage honorable realm, which meant that he was just a small step away from being an honorable. The sword formation he was using at that moment was so powerful that it killed this sage level tormented soul within a short moment. Along with a sharp howl, the sage level tormented soul turned into a light smoke and dissipated. All it left behind was a small cloud of black mist. Another source of ferocious qi. Chu Quang Gren frowned as he grabbed the source of ferocious qi in his hands. This source of ferocious chi was much smaller than the source of ferocious chi that he had obtained from killing the million unit tormented army. Grateful for being lucky, he then kept this source of ferocious chi into the wooden box, allowing it to merge with the other bundle of ferocious chi. In an instant and with a whoosh, the source of ferocious chi suddenly flew into Chu Quang Gren's body, and a message erupted within his mind. Infallible tormented physique. It's the infallible tormented physique which is ranked top 10 among the 3000 physiques that exist. A hint of surprise flashed across Chu Quang Gren's face. So there's another name for this source of ferocious chi. It's called the innate ferocious chi. This innate ferocious chi possessed various kinds of mysterious uses. However, its biggest use was to grant someone the infallible tormented physique. Moreover, it was the kind of infallible tormented physique that would immediately be fully realized, and once that physique has been fully mastered, even a sage could be easily killed. Chapter 245, Finding the Innate Ferocious Chi, Never Before Seen Threat Then again, I've only merged with two surges of innate ferocious chi which means I've only formed an early state of this physique and that's roughly 3% of progress. If I want to achieve the full state of this physique, I'm afraid there's still a long way to go, Chu Quan Gren murmured. However, he was not in a hurry. From the information contained within the innate ferocious chi, he knew that the ancient battlefield's core area had nurtured a lot of it over a very long time. As long as he gradually collected them, his infallible tormented physique would be fully achieved. Besides him, there were also the tormented souls in the core area who were extremely eager and desperate to obtain the innate ferocious chi. Since they were tormented souls, the innate ferocious chi was very beneficial to them, and it could even allow them to develop some spiritual ego too. Chu Quan Gren could not help but think of the white-robed general. Could that person possibly be a tormented soul who had developed a spiritual ego? Chu Quan Gren shook his head and no longer thought more about it. Then, he continued to explore the ancient battlefield's core area with his treasure locating skill to look for more innate ferocious chi. His treasure locating skill would not be able to locate innate ferocious chi that had merged with some other beings. However, independent innate ferocious chi still existed within the ancient battlefield. Chu Quan Gren spent a total of three days within the ancient battlefield's core area and had collected several surges of innate ferocious chi, one after another. However, 
these innate ferocious qi were not as concentrated as the one he had obtained upon purifying the tormented army. Despite that, he still managed to increase the infallible tormented physique's progress to 5%, which in return, increased his combat strength slightly. Another surge of innate ferocious qi. Using the treasure locating skill, Chu Quan Gren found a surge of innate ferocious qi located 3,000 miles away from him and so he quickly hurried over to get it. Yet before he could get close to his destination, he felt a terrifying energy fluctuation. Someone was fighting at the innate ferocious key location. With that, he slowed down his pace, concealed his energy, and cautiously approached. Since this was the ancient battlefield's core area, danger existed everywhere. Just by the mere energy fluctuations alone could he sense that they were at the level of a sage. Here, he dared not keep a high profile. Upon getting closer to the center of the energy fluctuations, he noticed that two figures were in battle. Horrifying surges of ferocious chi that were imbued with sage dea rhyme collided violently and caused a large part of the void to tremble on end. Chu Quan Gren then took a closer look and found that the two figures fighting were an old man in black robes and a giant ape with red eyes and black fur all over its body. Humph, for a mere tormented soul which has lost its spiritual ego, how can you possibly hope to defeat me even if you have the power of a sage? The black-robed old man snorted before he attacked the ape with a punch. A surge of terrifying deist rhyme then erupted from his thin figure and it merged with the ferocious chi to form a giant large palm, smashing the ape into the ground. In hiding, Chu Kuang Gren's heart throbbed upon witnessing this scene. The old man in black robes was a tormented soul as well. However, he possessed a spiritual ego. How much innate ferocious chi has he merged with? If Chu Kuang Gren could absorb the innate ferocious chi from his body, that would no doubt increase the progression of his infallible tormented physique even more. At that thought, he then secretly compared his and his opponent's strength. A sage could be categorized into different stages, which were sage, great sage, sage ruler. Despite them being in the same realm, there was a power difference between them. Hence, the sages had split every stage into seven steps. For example, first step sage, second step sage. First step great sage, second step great sage. The first step being the most common, while the seventh step signified the strongest. From what Chu Quan Gren could sense, the combat strength of that black-robed old man was roughly equivalent to a three-step sage, which was stronger than the Murong clan sages. However, he already killed the Murong clan sage one year ago. What about one year later then? I can win. Chu Quan Gren secretly said to himself. When the black-robed old man killed the tormented ape soul and obtained the innate ferocious chi, Chu Quan Gren immediately attacked. He immediately retrieved the sacred emerald sword case and 365 swords came flying out of it. The black-robed old man was shocked as he did not expect to be ambushed. Facing the incoming majestic sword chi and the impact of the deist rhyme from within the Four Seasons sword formation, the black-robed old man quickly channeled his ferocious chi and struck out a punch to intercept it. The black fist landed on the sword formation and shattered the sword chi. However, the remaining streaks of sword chi scattered in all directions instead to surround the black-robed old man. God damn it! The sword formation's energy is so strong. The black-robed old man instantly knew that he could not defeat the sword formation. So while the sword formation was not fully formed yet, a streak of black ferocious chi immediately shot out from his fingertips, slipping through the formation's gap and into the distance. He was looking at the sword formation's user. Once he saw his opponent's appearance, he was extremely shocked not only at his opponent's otherworldly temperament but his identity as well. This energy. It's a living person. I can't believe a living person came into the ancient battlefield's core area. Besides, his cultivation level is only it. Honorable Realm. The black-robed old man found it a little hard to believe. An honorable realm cultivator could deploy a sword formation of this degree and venture that deep into the ancient battlefield's core area. Young lad, I believe this must be your first time in the ancient battlefield's core area. Then you must know of the three great beings in this area that you should never provoke. Well, I'm one of them, so it's best that you... Attack. Before the black-robed old man could finish speaking, Chu Quan Gren had already activated his Four Seasons sword formation and instantly unleashed its most terrifying sword-based deist rhyme. He could tell that the black-robed old man was trying to buy time, but what he did not know was when his opponent had called for help. In that situation, that fight had to end as soon as possible. With that, the full might of the Four Seasons sword formation erupted and its immeasurably terrifying and mysterious sword chi suppressed the black-robed old man after a short while. Damn it! Young lad, if you dare to kill me, I shall. A flash of horror flashed across the black-robed old man's eyes. The power of this sword formation was even more terrifying than he had imagined. Before he could finish his sentence, a surge of energy formed by the cycle of the four seasons, the rotation of the sun and moon, and all the natural phenomena within the formation turned into a colorful giant sword that struck down upon him. With a bang, extremely terrifying streaks of sword chi swept out in all directions. The black-robed old man was smashed to pieces by that giant sword. 
when the sword qi had dispersed, Chu Quan Gren immediately dashed into the sword formation and gathered all the innate ferocious qi that his dead opponent left behind. That surge of innate ferocious qi was more concentrated than the ones he had collected in the past few days. He reckoned it could increase the progress of his infallible tormented physique to around 10%. So he kept that piece of innate ferocious qi and was just about to leave. However, an extremely terrifying aura instantly locked onto him at that moment. A black finger was approaching him from across the sky. Surges of ferocious qi tumbled through the clouds and rumbled the world. Even Chu Quan Gren could not help but become interested upon witnessing that attack. The descendant self-sword unsheathed from his waist while the six supreme foundation levels within his body released a dazzling divine light. He then activated the golden jade body and deployed all the three transformations of the exquisite nine orifices sword heart. Paired with the ferocious chi from his infallible tormented physique, he struck out a sword attack. The purple sword ray was vast and contained a surge of emperor's aura. Eventually, that sword ray collided with the approaching giant finger attack. The two surges of energy intertwined with each other, forming a terrifying force of impact that spread everywhere. Even Chu Quan Gren could not help but fall back hundreds of feet. His expression was incredibly stern. The user of that finger attack was no doubt the strongest enemy that he had ever encountered. He then took out a jade talisman and was prepared to crush it at any time. It was one of the items that he had obtained from the fantasy roulette this year, called the Great Shift Talisman. Since that item contained spatial energy, it could instantly transport him to hundreds of thousands of miles away. That was also one of the reasons why he was so confident in entering the core area. Even if he did encounter something dangerous that he could not defend, he could still escape at any time. Chapter 246, The Giant Tormented Sage Ruler, the White-Robed General took action, the innate ferocious crystal. Chu Quan Gren gazed into the distance. All he saw was a figure around three meters tall walking over to him in the air, with ferocious chi that was many times stronger than the black-robed old man emanating around him. It was a majestic-looking middle-aged man. His three-meter-tall body made him look like a giant, and paired with the frightening ferocious chi, it made Chu Quan Gren feel a tremendous pressure that he had never experienced. Daoist runes swirled within his eyes as he activated his Eye of Revelation. Giant Tormented Sage Ruler, one of the three ancient battlefield rulers, a tormented soul formed by the combination of the ancient battlefield's ferocious chi and the rage chi of a sage that died. A vast amount of innate ferocious chi contained in the target's body, around ten times that of ours. Ten times. If Chu Quan Gren were to absorb ten times the amount of the innate ferocious chi he possessed, the completion progress of his infallible tormented physique would increase up to 50%. Of course, that was merely wishful thinking as reality was often disappointing. Since his opponent was a sage ruler, Chu Quan Gren's meager cultivation level was not a match for him at all. I can't believe that a sage ruler existed within the ancient battlefield. Tisk, what a surprise indeed, Chu Quan Gren mumbled. However, the more he thought about it, the more he felt that it made sense. After all, this was the ancient battlefield, one of the ten great forbidden areas in the firmament star after all. If anything could exist, then how ridiculous could that be? Young lad, it's quite a remarkable feat for an honorable like you to possess such strength. I suppose you're a well-known figure in the outside world. The giant tormented sage ruler simply said to Chu Quan Gren. After that, a killing intent appeared shot out from his eyes. But this is the ancient battlefield. Based on the fact that you've killed my subordinate and stole his innate ferocious chi, no one in this world can possibly save you from me. He lifted his hand right after he spoke. There were ferocious chi and a horrifying surge of sage deist rhyme swirling around his fingertips. Chu Quan Gren was sure that he might not be able to survive that finger attack. If he were to take it on at full power, he would have to rely on his immortal body for recovery. Just as he was about to crush the great shift talisman to escape, a black spear suddenly shot over with lightning speed from a distance. That spear was locked onto the giant tormented sage ruler. The giant tormented sage ruler's expression froze with caution in his eyes. His finger attack that was supposed to target Chu Quan Gren fell onto the incoming spear instead. With a bang, horrifying energy exploded the moment they collided. It was as if the void was about to be distorted. The clashing of sage ruler level deist rhymes was incredibly horrifying. Under that impact, the giant tormented sage ruler's body was pushed by a few steps while the black spear rebounded. It was caught by a white arm, and as Chu Quan Gren gaze traveled from the spear, he then saw a familiar figure. Dressed in white robes and with a horrifying mask over his face, only a pair of dark, deep, emotionless eyes could be seen. That was the mysterious manifestation of the ancient battlefield, the white-robed general. Upon seeing that person once again, Chu Quan Gren immediately activated his Eye of Revelation to learn about him. Bian, formerly a general of the Tranquil Kingdom, one of the three ancient battlefield rulers, also known as the white-robed general, the figure behind the mysterious manifestation that was mentioned by many adventurers. Due to absorbing the innate ferocious Qi after he died, this figure is now considered a living dead that's trapped between the bounds of a tormented soul and a human. 
the innate ferocious chi contained within his body is ten times compared to what I possess. A string of messages appeared before him. This had more or less answered Chu Kuang Gren's doubts. No wonder this person gave me a bow after I purified the million unit tormented army. It turns out that he was a general of the Tranquil Kingdom after all. What's the meaning of this, white robed general? With caution in his eyes, the giant tormented sage ruler questioned the white robed general. Although the white robed general was the weakest among the three ancient battlefield rulers and also preferred to be alone, no one dared to look down upon his strength. The other two rulers were extremely terrified too. This person was the most special being among the three rulers. He was not a real human nor a real tormented soul but somewhere in between, so he still possessed a terrifying amount of combat strength. You're not allowed to kill this person. The white robed general said. His voice was very husky, deep, and cold. Why? The giant tormented sage ruler was slightly surprised. The white robed general had always wandered around the ancient battlefield. Besides occasionally fighting over some innate ferocious chi, he has never intervened in any matter for many years. As such, the other two sage rulers simply turned a blind eye to him, but never would they expect that the white robed general would do something because of Chu Quan Gren. I'm indebted to him, the white robed general replied. The giant tormented sage ruler was taken aback for a moment. Knowing that the white robed general's strength was on par with him, he wondered what Chu Quan Gren did that made him indebted to the latter. You've purified the soldiers under my command, so I shall forever take this kind act of yours to heart. Here, take this and leave. Once you've exited the core area, they won't be able to bother you again, the white robed general said as he took out a black crystal. Even the giant tormented sage ruler was shocked when he saw that item. T that's the innate ferocious crystal. I can't believe you had an innate ferocious crystal in your possession, white robed general. Are you mad? Why are you giving this item to a mere honorable? The giant tormented sage ruler could not hold back his emotions and roared. He looked at the innate ferocious crystal with greed in his eyes. The fact that even a sage ruler could be so startled by something like this proved that the innate ferocious crystal was incredibly valuable. Chu Quan Gren shot a surprised glance at the white robed general and then kept the innate ferocious crystal away. The moment he took over the innate ferocious crystal, Chu Quan Gren's expression froze a little as he realized why the giant tormented sage ruler lost his cool. This innate ferocious crystal contained an immeasurably concentrated amount of innate ferocious chi. It was no less than what was contained within the giant tormented sage ruler. One day. Wait for me for a day after you exit the core area. If I don't come to you within a day, then you can feel free to leave, the white robed general said. All right. Chu Quan Gren nodded. He then turned into a stream of light and dashed away. Not long after he left, an extremely terrifying burst of aura erupted behind him. Two forces that were strong enough to rumble most of the ancient battlefield collided and the area around there rumbled as if it was about to be shattered. The speed of Chu Quang Gren's phantom light strike was extremely fast, like a speed of light, as he sped out of the core area. I'm finally out. Ancient battlefield, inner zone. Chu Quang Gren had just exited the core area. He stopped at the edge of the core area and looked inward, where many fierce tormented souls were roaring at him from within. They were all sent by the giant tormented sage ruler to kill him. There were even a few among them who had the level of a sage. If not for his remarkable strength and technique that specialized in speed like the phantom light strike, Chu Quan Gren would have been torn to shreds by that group of tormented souls. Although he would recover, it would still be very painful for him. Sure enough, these tormented souls cannot come out of the core area, Chu Quan Gren muttered as he looked at the tormented souls roaring at him from a distance. If any one of those tormented souls were to be placed in the inner zone, they would be on the same level as the inner zone's ten tormented. However, they were unfortunately trapped within the core area instead. There seems to be something restricting, interest brewed in Chu Quan Gren's mind, and he started to examine why these tormented souls could not get out of the core area. He eventually discovered something. The ferocious chi on these tormented souls had connected with the earth chi within the core area. The stronger the ferocious chi, the closer its connection with the earth chi. It was precisely due to the connection with the earth chi that they could not get out and were trapped there like earthbound spirits instead. The inner or outer zone don't have characteristics like this, so it must be caused by the sage war that the mindful emperor talked about. Since the great formation was set up during that sage war, that must be what changed the characteristics of the Earth Chi within the core area. Chu Quan Gren thought. Chapter 247, Hordes of Tormented Souls, he sat down instead, fighting the tormented souls with Sword Chi clones. Ancient Battlefield, Inner Zone. Chu Quan Gren was fiddling with a black crystal in his hands. The crystal had an irregular shape and contained a concentrated amount of innate ferocious Chi that was ten times more than the amount present in his body. My precious. Chu Quan Gren grinned. If he could absorb the innate ferocious crystal, it would propel the progress of his infallible tormented physique to around 50% and above. By then, the amount of strength he could display would be incredibly terrifying. On top of other techniques or means of combat, the average sage would be no match to him at all. 
however, when compared to beings on the level of the giant tormented sage ruler. There would still be a large power gap between them. Even if he had merged with the innate ferocious crystal, the amount of innate ferocious chi he possessed would be similar to his opponent. However, because the giant tormented sage ruler had been inside the ancient battlefield for a very long time and absorbed countless amounts of ferocious chi, it meant that he would have other tricks up his sleeve besides a mere innate ferocious chi. Why hasn't the white-robed general come out yet? Chu Quangren looked towards the ancient battlefield's core area and muttered. At that moment, a strong fluctuation of ferocious chi came from behind him. A violent saber light suddenly swept towards him like a falling meteor. Chu Quangren immediately retaliated with a backhand and unleashed his human mountain stamp. Its raging human mountain energy brutally smashed the saber light into pieces. He looked to the distance and saw a tormented soul that was wielding a saber heading towards him at breakneck speed. It was one of the inner zone's ten tormented, the tormented saber wielder. Besides the tormented saber wielder, there was also a tormented soul in the form of a tiger and another small hill-sized giant black insect crawling on the ground. They were part of the inner zone's ten tormented as well the tormented tiger and tormented bug. Besides that, there was a huge amount of high-level tormented souls as well. Chu Quangren was stunned for a moment. Why are there so many tormented souls all of a sudden? Suddenly, he came back to his senses and stared at the innate ferocious crystal in his hands, upon which he said, are they attracted to the innate ferocious crystal? To the tormented souls, the innate ferocious chi was tantamount to good luck as it could even allow them to develop a spiritual ego too. Let alone a crystal filled with such concentrated innate ferocious chi. Perhaps all the tormented souls within the inner zone were rushing towards him now. Chu Quan Gren tossed the innate ferocious crystal into the air a few times before he kept it inside his yin and yang ring and chuckled. These bunch of impudent and tiny tormented souls. If the sage level tormented souls in the core area could not do anything to him, then what could these inner zones tormented souls do? The abnormal behavior of the inner zones tormented souls eventually attracted the attention of countless adventurers, especially the ones who had experienced the horrible incident that was the million unit tormented army. After all, everyone was still in a highly alert time period. Hence when they saw the tormented soul's abnormal behavior, they could not help but feel horrified. What's going on? Have these tormented souls gone crazy? It can't be. They're not going to gather in numbers like the tormented army and rush out of the ancient battlefield to create mayhem and destruction, right? Not much has happened on the ancient battlefield for so many years, yet why are so many abnormalities happening one after another in the past few days? No way, check it out everyone. These tormented souls are all heading towards the ancient battlefield's core area. What the hell is going on there? Let's go take a look. Some of the cultivators pondered for a while but because they could not hold back their curiosity, they decided to go and find out the cause of the tormented soul's abnormal behavior. In a short moment, everyone was near the core area. Those that dared to venture there were quite strong and capable, even the weakest among them was an honorable. Look, there's someone over there. Someone among the crowd yelled. A white spot then appeared in their field of vision, and that white spot itself was also the target of the countless tormented souls. That white spot was actually a person. It was a man who was clad in a wide-sleeved white robe with a gorgeous long sword hanging on his waist, and he possessed an ethereal and otherworldly temperament. It's Chu Quan Gren. Someone recognized him from within the crowd. The crowd looked at him, surprised. Why is he here? Hold up, he seems to be the target of all these tormented souls. What has he done to incur the wrath of so many tormented souls? Look, that's the tormented saber wielder, tormented bug, tormented great demon and a few others of the inner zone's ten tormented. With all those terrifying beings surrounding him, can Chu Quan Gren handle all of them alone? The tormented souls came in hordes, and among them were countless high-level tormented souls and also a few of the inner zone's ten tormented. A vast surge of domineering ferocious chi swept through the whole area. This troop was not any weaker than the previous million-unit tormented army. Compared to all of them, Chu Quan Gren looked very tiny. Don't you forget, that person is Chu Quan Gren. A cultivator took a deep breath and said with a serious tone. The others turned silent when they heard his words. If it were them standing before that horde of tormented souls, they would have no chance of winning even if they had an army of thousands of cultivators with them. However, Chu Quan Gren was different. He alone was better than a whole army. Everyone looked at Chu Quan Gren, interested to see how he would deal with the situation. Yet they saw him doing something shocking instead. Chu Quan Gren raised his arm lightly and the sand on the ground before him levitated in the air, forming into a chair. Chu Quan Gren sat on the chair casually as the hordes of tormented souls approached him. Many cultivators present were dumbfounded by his move. After all, seeing the incoming horde of tormented souls was enough to scare them to death. However, Chu Quan Gren simply faced them with a calm look on him. Hey, did he just sit down? Someone asked in disbelief. Some were rubbing their eyes as well, suspicious if they were hallucinating or not. Despite that, something even more shocking happened next. 
After Chu Quangren sat on the sand chair, he then snapped his fingers. Multiple streaks of sword chi came out of his body and turned into clones of him. Those clones were made of sword chi and looked exactly like Chu Quangren. All of them had sword chi and daist rhyme circulating around them. What, what kind of technique is this? By the heavens, there are so many clones. Everyone found it a little hard to believe. However, everything before them was real. While Chu Quan Gren sat in his sand chair, he activated his sword chi transformation to form 200 clones of himself that rushed to attack the countless tormented souls before him. The 200 sword chi clones then constructed a horrifying sword chi defense line, and none of the tormented souls could break through it for some time. Since I'm waiting for someone anyway, I'll play with all of you for a while. Chu Quan Gren sat on the sand chair with his legs crossed and said. Perhaps he felt that the 200 sword chi clones were not strong enough because he then took out the sacred emerald sword case and multiple swords flew out of it. With every sword chi clone wielding a treasured sword, their combat strength suddenly amplified. In the air, the cultivators who had rushed over were all confused. It was their first time witnessing a battle like that, with Chu Quang Gren's main body sitting comfortably in his chair while he sent out hundreds of sword chi clones to fight on the battlefield. So, this is the unparalleled and peerless Chu Quang Gren. What a terrifying strength he has. By the heavens, I think one sword chi clone of his can easily kill me, yet he's able to form a few hundred of them. Is he even human? Everyone was stunned speechless. Roar. One of the inner zone's ten tormented, the tormented saber wielder roared before it rushed past the sword chi clones and towards Chu Quan Gren to attack him. Not only the tormented saber wielder, but a few of the other inner zone's ten tormented broke through the line of defense as well. After all, there was still a limit to how strong the clones were as two hundred of them were all formed at once. The inner zone's ten tormented were all honorable supremes as well. Is Chu Quan Gren's main body going to attack? I guess so. Led by the tormented saber wielder, the inner zone's ten tormented all rushed towards Chu Quan Gren. Still sitting on the chair, Chu Quan Gren simply moved his body and everyone thought that he was going to get up to deal with the inner zone's ten tormented. However, they noticed that he had only moved his butt slightly. All he did was slowly lift his right hand and gently pressed it towards the direction of the attacking inner zone's ten tormented. Within the void, a terrifying surge of spiritual power merged with earth chi and formed into a majestic godly mountain which immediately landed on the tormented saber wielder and other inner zone's ten tormented. Boom! With a bang, a huge explosion erupted and rumbled the ground. Chapter 248, The General and the Princess, You help me find someone, I'll help you kill someone. Boom! A terrifying boom erupted from the ground. The entire ground rumbled as the majestic godly mountain fell from the sky, and its violent force sent gusts of sand and dust everywhere. When the godly mountain disappeared, the tormented saber wielder, tormented bug and the other inner zones ten tormented had all dispersed into dust. Chu Quang Gren's slap had killed them. Everyone gulped in shock. If those beings were killed with a mere slap, what else could they say? Those are the inner zones ten tormented we're talking about here. Even an honorable supreme would not dare take them lightly, yet they're all gone with a slap. That level of strength is just too terrifying. This guy is a freaking monster. Among the well-known sage orthodoxy sect leaders, I bet none of them possess such combat strength like Chu Quan Gren, right? God damn, he's undoubtedly someone who can kill a sage. Chu Quan Gren yawned as he sat on the sand chair. Even if it was to pass some time, those tormented souls were just too weak. They could not keep him entertained at all. Suddenly, he grinned as he felt a familiar ferocious chi fluctuation behind him. Someone interesting has arrived. He then slowly got up. Then from his body, a surge of compassionate deist rhyme emanated as a vast Buddhist light surged outward like a vast ocean, sweeping through all directions. Within the Buddhist light and across the skies stood a thousand-foot-tall giant golden Buddha. In an instant, Golden lotuses bloomed from the ground as sounds of Brahmic chimes reverberated through the void. As if they were snow under a scorching sun, the countless tormented souls gradually disintegrated under the effect of the Buddhist light, disappearing within a blink of an eye. The cultivators were all astounded by what they saw. Although some of them had witnessed the Tathagata rebirth mantra before, they were still shocked when they saw the boundless and majestic ancient Buddha again. How does he make a Buddha statue appear like this? It's too powerful. This technique is truly terrifying. The cultivators of the Thunder Temple are at the helm of Buddhism in the Azure Dragon Domain. However, I don't think even the Thunder Temple possesses such a horrifying technique. There's an Emperor's Aura as well, so it's an Emperor technique. How on earth does this guy even come up with so many powerful cultivation techniques? It's not heard of before even in the Black Heaven sect. Sage ruler techniques were already extremely uncommon in the Firmament Star. Yet that did not seem to be the case with Chu Quan Gren as he pulled out one Emperor technique after another. How could the other cultivators survive after witnessing him in action? Look, someone is coming out from the core area. Everyone was still overwhelmed by the Tathagata rebirth mantra. However, 
they soon recovered from their shock when they heard someone yelling, and they all looked in the direction of the core area. There was a figure in white robes, who held a spear in hand and a mask covering his face, walking towards him. The core area had always been the most dangerous place in the ancient battlefield, yet no one has ever seen anyone walk out of it before. Today was the first time that happened. Moreover, the person who came out amazed everyone tremendously because the image of that figure was just too familiar to them. White robes, a long spear, and a mask covering his face. Was he not the white-robed general that all the adventurers had been talking about? The white-robed general, it's the white-robed general. By the heavens, the mysterious manifestation about him is true. I can't believe the white-robed general truly exists. Everyone exclaimed as they stared at the white-robed general. Meanwhile, after wiping out all the tormented souls using the Tathagata Rebirth Mantra, Chu Quan Gren retracted his Buddhist light and turned to look at the white-robed general. He chuckled and casually formed a sand-made chair with a wave of his arm. Please take a seat, senior. After all, not only was he a general of the tranquil kingdom tens of thousands of years ago, but he was also a powerful being that stood shoulder to shoulder with sage rulers. It would only be appropriate to address such a person as senior. The white-robed general nodded slightly and sat before Chu Quan Gren. Seeing that both of them were sat together, the crowd of cultivators was even more dumbfounded. They could not understand how Chu Quan Gren had befriended the white-robed general. Senior, did you save me that time because of the tormented army? Chu Quan Gren immediately asked upon sitting down. Although he already had the answer, he still asked anyway since there was no easier method to break the ice and start their conversation. Yes. The white-robed general nodded. I was once their general. Tens of thousands of years ago when the Tranquil Kingdom declared war on the Lu Kingdom, our ruler recklessly stole the source of ferocious chi and used a sacrificial technique to turn a million soldiers in his army into tormented souls. I tried to stop him but failed in the end. My senior, if that's the case, then how did you become the way you are now? I was sentenced to death by my ruler, but my corpse was then brought into this area by the Lu Kingdom's princess. Using some kind of secret technique, she managed to transfer some of the ferocious chi sources into my body to bring me back to life. However, only my consciousness was restored and my body was rendered immobile back then. Only after thousands of years did I end up like this. The Lu Kingdom's princess saved you. That's right. She was my lover as well. At that, Chu Kuang Gren's eyes lit up. In his head, he suddenly played out a sorrowful love story between a general that fell in love with a princess from the enemy nation. After I was awakened, I became connected with the Earth Chi here because I had absorbed a thousand years worth of ferocious Chi. Although I'm not imprisoned here like the other tormented souls, I still cannot go too far from the core area. I've wandered through the ancient battlefield all these years to find the million unit tormented army, but my effort was to no avail. It was until the appearance of the ancient Lu Kingdom a few days ago that I sensed their presence and later saw you purifying them, the white robed general explained. So that's how it all happened. Then what about this? Chu Quan Gren took out the innate ferocious crystal. Because you've absorbed some of the ferocious chi source, which is the innate ferocious chi, and formed the infallible tormented physique, this innate ferocious crystal will greatly benefit you. This a token of my appreciation to you for purifying the great army. Then I shall accept this gift. Chu Quan Gren had no intention to refuse that gift too. Besides this, I also need your help with something. Pray tell, my senior. I can sense that a descendant of my bloodline is still alive in this world. I hope you can help me find and take care of them, the white-robed general said. My senior, if a descendant of your bloodline is still alive, does it mean that the princess is not dead yet? She's probably dead. Otherwise, she would have come looking for me here. At the mention of that, the concentrated ferocious chi that filled the white-robed general's body let out a hint of sorrow. It was quite a moving sight. Even though she has passed away, there's a possibility that she managed to escape before the Lu Kingdom's demise and gave birth to our descendant. Otherwise, how could the others break through the Lu Kingdom's enchanted boundary without the Lu Clan's ancient sword? The Lu Clan's ancient sword. That's right. The Lu Clan's ancient sword is required to enter the kingdom's enchanted boundary and only Lu Kingdom's royalty possesses it. So if none of the royals of the Lu Kingdom survived that battle, then how did the Lu Clan's ancient sword get out there? It seems like Shang Han and the others entered the Lu Kingdom by using the Lu Clan's ancient sword. So where did the Lu Clan's ancient sword they used come from? Chu Quan Gren thought to himself. He did not accept the white-robed general's request immediately. After all, searching for someone's descendant among the vast sea of people in this world was quite a challenging task with many uncertainties. If you agree to help me look for my descendant, I shall hunt down the tormented souls and help you gather the innate ferocious chi, the white-robed general said. Cough, since you've helped me a lot before, it's only natural for me to help you in return, my senior. You can leave the task of finding your descendant to me. That's great. The white-robed general took out a jade talisman and handed it to Chu Quan Gren. This talisman is a token of love between me and the princess. 
If my descendant holds it, this jade pendant will react. Maybe this could help you. Chu Quan Gren took over the jade talisman. I'll do my best. We'll meet again. The white-robed general stood up and walked towards the core area behind him. Wherever he went, the tormented souls all moved aside and created a path for him. It was an obvious sign that they were very fearful of the white-robed general. Chapter 249, 60% Progress, Onwards to Thunder Temple, the sect leader's grand perk. Chu Quan Gren left the ancient battlefield after keeping the Jade Talisman safe. Throughout his journey, he no longer had frequent encounters with other tormented souls. It was evident that most of the tormented souls were drawn to his innate ferocious crystal, and he annihilated them immediately. However, since the ancient battlefield was connected to a stream of unending rage qi and ferocious qi, it would only be a matter of time before the tormented souls return. Master, you're back. Back in Sun Soil City, Lan Yu's eyes lit up upon Chu Quang Gren's return. Yup. Chu Quang Gren nodded. In the next few days, he began to refine the innate ferocious crystal which contained a concentrated reserve of innate ferocious qi. Once it was refined, it would allow Chu Quang Gren's infallible tormented physique to be enhanced even further. On this day, Chu Quan Gren had finished refining the innate ferocious crystal. A burst of terrifying ferocious qi erupted from his body and upwards into the sky. It spread so wide that more than half of Sun Soil City could sense its presence. Every cultivator was shocked when they felt the ferocious qi. What a terrifying ferocious qi. This ferocious qi does not have the usual rage qi that's associated with the tormented souls. But if it isn't the tormented souls, then what else can it be? I've never seen such pure ferocious qi in my many years at the ancient battlefield. Where exactly did it come from? The thick ferocious chi spread vastly across the sky as its violent deist rhyme spread through the void. The citizens felt as if they could hear a loud battle roar echoing from an ancient time. It was filled with a boundless ferocious chi and battle intent. After a while, the transformation slowly disappeared. In the inn's room, Chu Quan Gren opened his eyes and let out a contemptuous smile as he felt his body gushing with a boundless source of tormented chi. 60% completed. Now that my infallible tormented physique has reached 60% progress, I can probably battle a sage just by leveraging on this physique alone. It deserves to be one of the top 10 deist physiques among the 3000 physiques. Chu Quan Gren murmured. Without taking into account his other techniques, Chu Quan Gren now possessed three different kinds of deist physiques the Golden Jade Body, the Exquisite Nine Orifices Sword Heart, and the Infallible Tormented Physique. It was terrifying enough for a person to possess three unique deist physiques. What more, the latter two ones that Chu Quan Gren possessed were supreme deist physiques. Besides that, he also possessed an incomplete form of transcendent coalescence deist physique. Although having three and a half deist physiques did not make him undefeatable in the whole world, it was enough to place him beyond the rest of the younger generation cultivators in Firmament Star. Well, I'm now the Black Heaven sect leader, which is a status far higher than a typical fellow youngster, yet I keep comparing myself with people of the same generation. Hehe, <laughs> I need to shift my mindset and aim higher. Chu Quan Gren smiled. No one of the same generations could rival him. He must set his sight on cultivators who had at least become a sage. Let's begin today's gotcha roll. Congratulations, host. You've earned a starlight tier technique, giant palm of exorcism. Acquire. To Chu Quan Gren, a starlight tier technique may now be insignificant, but there was no harm in acquiring more techniques. Chu Quan Gren was mildly surprised by the description upon acquiring the technique. Just like the Tathagata Rebirth Mantra, the giant palm of exorcism was also a form of Buddhist technique. Looks like I can't deny myself as a Buddhist cultivator anymore. Chu Quan Gren laughed and shook his head. Lan Yu, pack up, we're getting ready to leave. Chu Quan Gren said to Lan Yu. He had had his fair shares of adventures in the ancient battlefield and had reaped many opportunities of fortune from it. Perhaps the biggest of them all was the infallible tormented physique. All right. Lan Yu nodded. The duo then prepared to leave town. However, they bumped into Wu Yet at the entrance. Teacher, greeted Wu Yet as he bowed towards Chu Quan Gren. Greetings, Master Wu Yet. I'm afraid I can't share my Buddhist techniques with you today. We're in the midst of leaving this place, said Chu Quan Gren. Leaving? Where do you plan to go, teacher? Just roaming around. Wu Yi's eyes lit up. Actually, the abbot did send a message to have me invite you back to Thunder Temple. If you don't mind, perhaps you can join me, teacher. Master Huai Xian sent an invitation. Huai Xian was the current abbot of Thunder Temple. Chu Quan Gren gave it some thoughts before he agreed. Sure. After all, he had nothing better to do. Perhaps a visit to Azure Dragon Domain's largest sacred land of Buddhism did not sound too bad. Chu Quan Gren had once heard that the vegetarian meals served in Thunder Temple were quite good. With that, they left the ancient battlefield. Chu Quan Gren, Lan Yu, and Wu Ye set foot towards the Thunder Temple. 
considering that there was a significant distance between the Thunder Temple and the ancient battlefield, Chu Quan Gren summoned the elusive mirage to speed up their journey. Wu Ya looked at the enormous elusive mirage before him and could not help but gulp in awe. Had a Black Heaven sect leader always enjoyed such a grand perk? It was not even a day before the trio arrived at the Thunder Temple. A few novice monks were raking dried leaves before the entrance. The sky became dark all of the sudden. It's getting dark now. Is it going to rain? A novice monk looked up and was immediately dumbfounded. Oh dear, what? What is this thing? Above them was the enormous elusive mirage that covered the entire sky and blocked all the sunlight, exerting a majestic impression upon its surroundings. Then, the elusive mirage reduced into a single orb and vanished. Three figures descended from above. Brother Wu Yat. A novice monk noticed Wu Ye amongst the trio and greeted him. At that moment. Inside the Thunder Temple. Within a worship hall, the current abbot of Thunder Temple, Master Huey Xian, abruptly opened his eyes and smiled. A distinguished guest has arrived. He stood up and put on his Kazaya before he headed towards the entrance. Under Wu Yi's guidance, Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu took in the surrounding scenery as they entered the Thunder Temple. Situated among the mountains, the ancient temple had a serene and peaceful atmosphere. This is the back mountain area of the Thunder Temple where we usually cultivate. The other side is where the Mahavira Hall and Buddha Halls are, where pilgrims come and worship, Wu Ye gave Chu Quan Gren an introduction. Aside from the pilgrims, Thunder Temple rarely saw any visitors, let alone had them in the less accessible area of the back mountains. Many monks were curious when they saw Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu. Who are those two? They have such beautiful features. Could it be a reincarnation of the Buddhas? Amitabha, the back mountain area of this temple is a serene location, how could they simply allow a lady in? I recognize her, she's young Emperor Lan Yu. Young Emperor? Then that's fine. The person beside her is Chu Quan Gren from the Black Heaven sect. Why is he here? The monks engaged in quiet gossip. At that moment, an elder monk in a golden kazaya came and bowed slightly towards Chu Quan Gren. Forgive me for not receiving you at the main entrance, Black Heaven sect leader. There's no need for too much formality, Master. Wu Ya mentioned that it was you who invited me here. I wonder if there's anything I can do for you. Chu Quan Gren smiled as he said. We can talk about it later. It's probably been a long journey for you. I've instructed someone to prepare some vegetarian meals and we can talk about this after the meal. Sounds good. I've heard that the vegetarian meals in this temple are extraordinary, I must taste it for my own, Chu Quan Gren said with a smile. The vegetarian meals of Thunder Temple were indeed extraordinary. It included spirit grains that were rich in spiritual energies and they utilized many spiritual herbs. Although it seemed like a normal vegetarian meal, it was incredibly nutritious and delicious. Chu Quan Gren and Lan Yu ate several servings. Brother Chu, I've heard that you are well versed in the ways of Buddhism. I've invited you here today in hopes of sparring with you. Huey Xian said after everyone had finished their meals. Chapter 250, I am the Buddha, what a master indeed, enlightened in a single sentence. Cough, Chu Quan Gren nearly spitted out his half-swallowed rice when Huey Xian made the suggestion. What now? Another one who wanted to talk to him about Buddhism? The last time this happened with Wu Ye, he nearly went mad even though the incident ended up being favorable for him and Wu Ye actually improved in his Buddhist cultivation. However, who knew if Chu Quan Gren could still be that lucky this time? Although Chu Quan Gren possessed the lucky halo, he still hesitated to react rashly. No matter how lucky he was, he could not bear the consequence of driving a person to insanity. Master, you're one of the most renowned eminent monks there is, few could rival you in Buddhism. How am I capable of sparring with you? Brother, you're too humble. Wu Ye has told me everything. Till today, I've yet to fully realize the intricacies of the wise teaching you shared with him. I'm afraid it's me who cannot rival against your knowledge of Buddhism. Hwe Xian laughed bitterly. Hwe Xian was genuinely ashamed. As the abbot and a great eminent monk of his generation, Hwe Xian's Buddhist cultivation had lost to a youngster despite years of studying the Buddhist teachings. Hwe Xian felt embarrassed in the face of such a reminder. However, this encounter represented an opportunity for him as well. Just like Wu Ye, Hui Xian had been stuck within the same Buddhist realm for years now. He simply needed a mentor to guide him on the right path. Such a mentor could only be someone whose Buddhist cultivation was above him. Unfortunately, even the sages of Thunder Temple could barely surpass his cultivation realm, let alone other members of the temple. Chu Kuang Gren's appearance gave Hui Xian a glimmer of hope. When Wu Ye recited the lines of Buddhist teachings that Chu Kuang Gren had imparted to Hui Xian, he felt that the Buddhism bottleneck that existed for years had finally shaken. That was precisely why Hwei Xian had invited Chu Quan Gren to the temple. He had hoped that through their sparring process, Hwei Xian could finally break through the bottleneck. I hope you don't mind sharing your ways with me. Hwei Xian looked at Chu Quan Gren with the utmost sincerity. On the other hand, 
Chu Quan could feel a headache. If Chu Quan was really well versed in the ways of the Buddha, he would not mind sparring with Hui Xian, but unfortunately, Chu Quan was not familiar at all. Chu Quan only exposure to Buddhist teachings was from hearing scattered well known verses here and there in his past lives. Who knew how much use it could be? He could probably get away with reciting some ancient Buddhist poems before people who were less well versed with Buddhist teachings. However, to enlighten a supreme honorable eminent monk was another story. If you could grant my request, the entire scripture library and all its ancient archives shall be open for your reference. Just when Chu Quan Gren was planning to decline Hui Xian's request, Hui Xian abruptly made another offer. The surrounding monk's jaws immediately dropped. The scripture library of Thunder Temple was home to many valuable Buddhist teachings records and technique archives that dated back to ancient times. No one would expect that in order to spar with Chu Quan Gren, Hui Xian was willing to make such a huge sacrifice. At that, Chu Quan Gren immediately cancelled his intention to decline as his eyes lit up and he considered the offer. Scripture Library Although Chu Quan Gren was not interested in Buddhist scriptures, he did feel that the Buddhist techniques would be of great use to him. After all, he possessed the incomplete form of the transcendent coalescence deist physique. If this physique was brought to completion, it would be the ultimate supreme deist physique, superior even to the exquisite nine orifices sword heart and infallible tormented physique. The completed deist physique would bring myriads of benefit to him. Meanwhile, in order to achieve that goal, Chu Quan Gren needed to amass a large number of techniques to further enhance his insight in the way of Dao. Chu Quan Gren had learned many techniques by now. Just from the Dharma sect alone, Chu Quan Gren had already mastered more than 8,000 techniques. However, Chu Quan Gren still needed to journey further should he wish to complete the transcendent coalescence deist physique. To be able to freely indulge in the sea of Buddhist techniques the scripture library could offer was a rare opportunity. I'm willing to discuss teachings with you, Master. But I'm not sure if I would be of much help to you, said Chu Quan Gren truthfully. No problem. Whether this sharing session is successful or not, the scripture library will still be open for you, said Master Huey Xian cheerfully. Very well, then let's begin. Please follow me, Brother Chu. Huey Xian led Chu Quan Gren into a grand hall. Within the hall was a row of majestic Buddha statues. There were two Zephas in front of those statues. Chu Quan Gren and Huey Xian each took their seats before they began to exchange knowledge. The news of them both sparring soon spread throughout Thunder Temple. Many monks came to observe when they heard their abbot was about to exchange knowledge with Chu Quan Gren. Even the sage monks were surprised. In a small worship hall deep inside the Thunder Temple. Several old monks were sitting in the meditation posture. One of them suddenly opened his eyes and said excitedly, Interesting, Hui Xian is now exchanging the ways of the Buddha with Chu Quan Gren. I wonder how high Chu Quan Gren's Buddhist attainment is. Ha, let's go take a look. He's definitely full of surprises. The Golden Buddha statue in the ancient battlefield was enough to prove that Chu Quang Gren's Buddhist cultivation is remarkable. They then sent their spiritual thoughts out of the small worship hall. At this moment, in the Grand Hall, Chu Quang Gren and Hui Xian were sitting on the Zephus. After you, brother. Hmm. Chu Quang Gren looked ahead and asked, What does the Buddha mean to you? To free all living beings from torment and to do good is to live the ways of the Buddha. Hmm, this is a reasonable answer. Chu Quang Gren replied softly. If I may ask, brother, what does the Buddha mean to you? Hui Xian looked at Chu Quan Gren and asked solemnly. I'm the Buddha. Those words alone were like thunder that exploded in the monks' ears, and the faces of the Thunder Temple sages changed drastically. Ridiculous. He's the Buddha? Does he even have respect for the Buddha? Here I was thinking that this bastard would have any insightful knowledge to our teachings. Who would have thought he would end up uttering such shameless remarks? The monks and sages of the Thunder Temple were horrified by Chu Quan Gren referring to himself as the Buddha. Their reaction soon turned into one of anger. To them, Chu Quan Gren's remark was a huge insult to the Buddha. Such a remark was sure to provoke anger among others. Brother Chu, what do you mean by this? Hui Xian said sternly. It was evident that he was pissed off at Chu Quan Gren's remarks. I'm the Buddha. Or rather, every living being is the Buddha. The Buddha resides within us. It's not something we search for outwardly. To acknowledge the Buddha within is the path to true Buddhism. Once Chu Quan Gren explained, the crowd immediately went into deep contemplation. Even the Thunder Temple sages could even feel a resounding clarity echoing within their minds. Hui Xian's body jerked, and the Buddhist light on his body began to surge as he ascended into a state of enlightenment. What was the way of the Buddha? The Buddha was not a physical presence. The Buddha was a way of life. Every living being had the traits of the Buddha residing within them. To acknowledge and understand such traits was to become the Buddha. Therefore, Every living being was the Buddha. The way of the Buddha existed in everything. Hui Xian's Buddhist light glowed even brighter. It was only after a while that he gradually opened his eyes, 
stood up, and gave Chu Quan Gren a bow. Thank you for showing me the way, brother. You're overcomplimenting me, master. Do you wish to continue? Your high Buddhist cultivation is admirable. I've gained more than I could ever ask for from one line of wisdom. There's no need to continue further. Hui Xian said softly. Chu Quan Gren was confused. Was that it? Was it that simple? And about the scripture library? Rest assured. From today onwards, all the scriptures in the library shall be made available to you, brother. You're free to read it at your own will. All right. Chu Quan Gren nodded satisfyingly. Chu Quan Gren did not expect the exchange to go that smoothly. Hui Xian had gained all the insights he needed to become enlightened from a single sentence, what a master indeed.